Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez, joined as always by my co host, my husband, and my brother. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. Hi, I'm Travis Hunter. This week, we are recording live from a very awkward birthday party discussing the 2019 psychological horror film, St. Maud. This film was written and directed by Rose Glass. While many horror films explore elements of religion, this film takes it to another level by blending it with themes of mental health, loss, and loneliness. This film was recommended to us by friend of the show, Sophie Hodson. If you're not already subscribed to her Instagram, there's never been a better time. For the month of October, Sophie served some incredible spooky looks, so be sure to follow our girl over on Instagram at Sophie Serves Face. So, what did you guys think of St. Maud the first time you saw it? I remember the first time I watched it, I didn't really like it, mm. but I think maybe I wasn't paying attention to what was going on as much. Watching it for the show, I still didn't like it. I'm just <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was it was a little better. It's not my taste in horror, mm -hmm. but it, it was better paying attention and seeing everything uh, that I clearly missed or like overlooked or whatever. Um, I did like it more this time. Uh, there are some things that I wish were a little different, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just me trying to make it my style of movie. You I know gotcha. what I mean? So, well, we've gone in the past where we're like, this movie would be better if it was exactly what yeah. I wanted. <laughs> so I can't fault you yeah. for that. I think we've all been there. I remember having interest in this film before it dropped and then it got delayed with, because of obviously covid yeah mm -hmm. kind of really fucked up things for everyone yeah yeah if you've heard of it it's uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when it finally did drop i think it dropped on something called epics mm -hmm. here in the states and i was like i don't know what the fuck that is yeah but i think it's a paid channel yeah or? i never heard of it until saint mod right i was like so saint mod started its own streaming service yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it finally dropped on i think amazon prime yeah and i watched it i loved it so much and it was absolutely agonizing waiting for you, Nay, to find the time to watch it. Yeah. Because I wanted to talk to somebody about it. I did get to talk to Sophie about it. And yes. I, I love that she recommended this film yes. because I know that she's as excited to hear about it mm -hmm. as I am to talk about it. At least I hope so. I don't want to yeah. put words in people's mouths. But <laughs> I think that it is so brilliant, this film. And I think that it is such a fantastic debut. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't even feel like a debut. Mm -hmm. It no, it really doesn't. There's a confidence to it. You know what? I, I, I will put it in the same camp. Rose Glass for me now is with Ari Aster. I was about to say Ari Aster and Jordan Peele. Yeah. Where it's like, look, you you have impressed me so much with this debut. I will watch anything you make. And I also would like to admit that it scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were all over me to watch it. And I, you just kept going, it's short, it's short, please, yes, yes. please. <laughs> but uh, I finally did, me and John Paul watched it. And I feel like I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. And there's a lot of, okay, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think watching it that second time, you see that we've really been told this one story the whole time mm -hmm. but you don't really get that clarity until you're watching it after already having seen it if yeah, that makes yeah. sense yeah but uh yeah no i loved it there's one part in particular where i hit the fucking roof like <laughs> armpit tingling yes. fucking, i it scared the, <laughs> the shit not just like a jump scare it to my core fucking rocked my shit yeah i, I pissed at my <laughs> shit <laughs> I was actually, I watched it at like midnight for some reason. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that it was going to be anything that I was going to be like, you know, thinking about later or anything. <laughs> but I will say that that moment that you're talking about, and I don't do this often, I yelled at the screen <laughs> <laughs> because I was actually mad. I think I was more mad at myself for putting myself through this <laughs> at such a late scared. hour. <laughs> yeah. But I literally, when it happened, I said, fuck you. Yeah. Like I was like so shocked. I, it, I think I also yelled, oh, fuck, because I just wasn't. And John Paul's just sitting there. I was like, yeah. how are you not? <laughs> it, it had not been that film to that point. No, mm -hmm. no. To where it was anything you could have anticipated happening. Mm -mm. So I just think that it's very rare these days for a film to shock you. Right, right. And not in a way that's like, uh, you know, 
like a like hostile or something yeah where you're right. like i can't believe they're showing this no yeah. it's shocking in a way that i can't it, believe this is happening yes yeah. <laughs> exactly and that's way better i think no for sure but it's i mean it's scary it's sad mm -hmm. it's like weirdly beautiful like some of the shots i mean it's just mm -hmm. i can't think of a movie like this i saw one that came out after recently that reminded me of it but one that came before it i can't the ending ending itself the last i don't know 30 seconds mm -hmm. made me react i mm. mean like the movie was over and i'm just sitting there looking at the screen like oh my fucking god yeah and i can't that's a rare for me to be able to to just have to marinate in it after yeah. like yeah and that's a great feeling yes um thankfully amazon prime was not like netflix and they didn't just go to the next whatever yeah. Yeah. i was like no no, no stop <laughs> wait i need to sit in it <laughs> now before we pray with this film we would like to issue a warning for spoilers Podmortem is a very in-depth podcast and in thoroughly discussing horror films we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two if you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, then let's put our shoes on. So the film opens in what looks to be a hospital room, but it's like dark. Mm -hmm. It is darker than the hospital in Halloween too. It is. Yeah, it's, it's hard to see. <laughs> Which is saying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but we see blood steadily dripping from hair and onto the floor. There's a shot of Maude, played by Morphid Clark, sitting in a corner looking traumatized. Across from her is a body on a gurney, the head leaned slightly off the table and dripping blood. Mm -hmm. Maude sits in the corner, blood smeared on her face and on her gloved hands, and looks up into the corner of the ceiling. A cockroach scurries across it, and she stares enraptured, and then it fades to black. So that's a lot off the bat. I know, that a uh, fucking roach... In Wait, this dark ass yeah, hospital. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, that, I, I could have touched him. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we're focused on the roach yeah. and not the corpse on, yeah. the, well, on the bed. It's a hospital. That's true. These things happen. Yeah, they they can have corpses, but not yeah. roaches. I think it's interesting they show those three things. You know, they show a dead body, mm -hmm. right? Show a cockroach mm -hmm. and a woman that is transfixed on it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And none of it makes sense right now, but all of it will. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things with films where they show you weird shit and they're like, hold on. And you're right, like, what right. the fuck? Give me just like, a second. Just wait. I do want to say, I, I before the film even opens, we get the A24 logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to talk about A24 for a second. Okay. Because I feel like, I don't know that the, it feels like the tide has turned because it feels like it's become fashionable to shit on A24. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to say that there's a lot of films that they've distributed that have been just remarkable I'm mm -hmm. not trying to get a sponsorship. I just. <laughs> but if you were so inclined. <laughs> if I was so inclined. I mean, if they wanted, to, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> but I mean, they do. They do a lot of good work. I will say it is ridiculous that on their website, they do have a three candle set for $120. There we can start to have some. God damn. Co uh, conversations about right, uh, right. them not being so great. <laughs> but and I just lost the sponsorship. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, but Kent's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he was already tweeting at them. But uh, no, I think they do great work. But we get the giant title card, Saint Maud, white against a black background before it all dissolves into red. And then the red turns into a boiling sauce. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's a transition. Yeah, I, I was a little like now that's I was like, what? Was like, What's hot? What is this? And it was zoomed in. Yeah, it was. So it was ratatouille. Or? <laughs> <laughs> but we come in on Maud's apartment and there's faint arguing outside. But Maud closes her small window and blocks it out. She makes herself a bowl of that red sauce mm -hmm. and sits down at her table. Her apartment is really small. One mm -hmm. might say modest. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, sorry. No, you're fine. And there's, <laughs> there's a nursing uniform hanging up. She begins to pray over her meal, asking God to watch over her as she starts her new posting. She notes that she'll have to get up at six o'clock in the morning. We see her leaving her apartment the next morning, but the sound of her praying continues. She frets over the pain in her stomach, which is now even worse because of her period. She apologizes for being impatient, but hopes that God will be revealing his plan for her soon because she's sure that he saved her for something greater than this. Not that she's complaining. No, she's yeah. like, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. <laughs> Everything's pizza. Well. I'm just saying. 
I could be doing better. But <laughs> I think my thing that was interesting to me is the way that she's framed in her own apartment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She seems very small. Yes. Right. They're so far away. That's one theme that I really see pop up a lot in a lot of interviews is this idea of loneliness yes. and isolation. And for me, it's already starting off with that shot of mm-hmm. her just being a small character in her own world, right, yeah. right. which is kind of sad. Another thing I will say is that in her prayer, she did tell God that she was taking milk of magnesia and ibu- <laughs> yeah. ibuprofen. I was like, is this still the prayer? <laughs> like, <laughs> God's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Jesus is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and god's like this prayer man i can't i just feel like there are more important things to talk about i mean she's got nobody else that's fair so yeah and something's wrong then huh if her I, stomach is bothering her and mm-hmm. it's like so is that gonna get brought up or i mean it's got to be a sign of something i mean we'll talk <laughs> we'll talk but she leaves her apartment and walks down a long flight of stairs to the street below she walks past like a coney island Mm -hmm. yeah it honestly looks really cool it looks really fun i thought i was like oh we're in new york we're in england no we're not (laughs) i saw this was filmed in a seaside town it's called scarborough in north yorkshire england scarborough yes uh i want to go to there because Uh, yeah all these seaside towns in england Uh, just look brilliant to me i maybe because we're in a landlocked area right right i bet people who live there are like dude this is nothing (laughs) but (laughs) the grass is always yeah always on every side (laughs) or whatever he said on poltergeist (laughs) (laughs) but she walks up a giant flight of stairs into the side of a hill like yeah it's like majestic it's like she's going to Dracula's castle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we pan up and see a big, beautiful house on the top of that hill. Maud climbs the stairs and rings the doorbell. Man, fuck that. That was the a, stairs. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you mean I got to climb more? I was like, oh. Yeah, because there's a big ass flight at her apartment. Yeah. Yeah, that would suck. Is there not a street her cardio. access yeah. or anything? So, yeah. I was like, 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 a cart pick me up? Yeah, do I have to? There? A chauffeur? This house yeah. is big enough. It's a lot. <laughs> Jesus. But Maude is greeted at the door by a nurse played by Quelan Dunn. The nurse gathers her things as she gives Maude her instructions. She's left notes for her to follow. The patient has a visitor coming over tomorrow, so try to keep her from drinking and give her her new B12 shots every night before dinner. She tells Maude that her room is upstairs and that the patient is in her own room right now resting. Maude asks how the patient is and the nurse answers unfiltered. She's a bit of a cunt. No, I well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd rather be I, honest. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. I appreciated the honesty of this yeah. nurse. Uh, I don't believe we ever see her again. You never see her <laughs> yeah. again, and she is ready to go the minute oh, yeah. Maude walks in the door. She's like, "All right, bitch, I'll see." Wow, well, I mean, we just heard. But, True. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that would worry me if I'm Maude. Yeah, yeah. But she tells Maude to have fun, and then immediately leaves. Maude heads upstairs and begins to unpack in her room. She removes a framed photo from one of the walls and replaces it with her crucifix. It seemed very interesting to me because whenever you look at her planting the crucifix, Mm -hmm. planting, I don't know (laughs) the word I'm looking for. She grew several crucifixes. When she puts it on there, not only does it fit perfectly into that rectangle, Mm -hmm. it seems like it was supposed to be there. You know what I mean? I'm sure to her it was. Exactly. Which, I mean, she is, I guess, staying here for some point in time. It looks like a live-in situation. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we'll find out in just a second that the patient is terminal. Uh Uh-huh. So I think it's a, like, you live here, take care of her. This is kind of the end. (laughs) So, like, if I go there, I could, like, put up a Halloween poster and that's cool. (laughs) I I mean, it's your room, It's her room. I I don't know. I just feel like doing that is a little. <laughs> I, well, I, I kind of thought the same thing. You know, I was like, that's not your house. No. Like, the fact that she took a picture down. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> my thing. Not so much the you putting your own thing no. up. But I mean. <laughs> like, uh, that's not right. I'm. Did you know that I'm living here? <laughs> like, that's weird. But later we see her checking the patient. She's Amanda Cole, played by Jennifer Ely. Maud's voice tells us that Amanda is 49 years old with stage four lymphoma of the spinal cord. My God. It sounds awful. Yeah. Yes. Amanda smokes a cigarette as Maud tests the feeling in her legs and feet. Amanda seems to be able to feel everything. As she climbs into her wheelchair, she instructs Maud that she would like dinner at eight o'clock and that she's left a shopping list for her. Maud tries to wheel Amanda out of the room, but Amanda just takes control of her own chair and leaves. I have to say I dig Amanda's vibe. One 
hundred mm-hmm. fucking percent. Like from jump. And I did read in the LA Times that in the original writing of the script, Amanda was supposed to be a very elderly British woman. Yeah. But I feel like this works better as far as their dynamic. Right. It does, especially as the film progresses. Mm -hmm. Because I can't see what kind of comes pretty soon, honestly. I can't see this dynamic happening with this like super, super elderly, like bedridden woman. No, I really. just don't I mean I, I mean it could, but I feel like it would it would as the kids say, it would hit different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, another thing is that she is still smoking. Oh yeah. And which, chain, yeah. chain smoking. No, yeah. I yeah. thought it was interesting, but I I, I think it's time to have a little like nuanced adult conversation. If we look at smoking, if we take out, you know, the diseases the horrible companies, the smell. Uh, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you mean if you're just watching it, it happen on yes, film? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, There's something visually cool about it. I don't know. But don't do it. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't smoke. Don't smoke. I know I've... Uh, your sister's said it before. I know we haven't really talked about it for a while, but we both used to smoke. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, like, the the craving is still there. Right. But you don't. It's like no, I'm I'm okay. It's See, like I'd rather not. I've never I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. Don't one yeah, time. No, I no, will. No, no. <laughs> wait, because there's a dumb story along oh, with that. Oh no! One time, this girl I was in high school, and she said if I smoked her cigarette, she would kiss me on the cheek. Right. And so I pulled a Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did, did not, not inhale, inhale. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get a kiss on the cheek so it was wow. you know <laughs> so, so the cancer was worth exactly. it <laughs> <laughs> but I looked very cool <laughs> <laughs> but as dinner cooks on the stove Maude prepares a tray with Amanda's medicine and a glass of water her voice tells us that she looked up Amanda before coming to her home and found out that she's a minor celebrity a choreographer and a dancer so that explains her house right yeah because yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Maude says she doesn't like creative people because she sees them as self-involved. And I'm like, oh, you sound fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm cool. This is our like first meeting, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing that you spend your whole life doing? Not a fan. Yeah. Right. Trash. <laughs> In the living room, Amanda raises her sleeve to get her B12 shot and lights a cigarette as Maude gives it to her. She takes her medicine without a fight. She's a regular Betty Draper with the smoking. She is, yeah. Like, I, th- I feel like, at least in the beginning, every scene you see her in, like, when they cut to it, she's either lighting up a smoke. No, or... I, I have the same note written down. I was like, damn, lady, yeah. maybe calm down. Because <laughs> it is. It's like e- after every single thing, a cigarette, a cigarette. Yeah. It's like, dude. But at the same time, like, I, this is probably bleak, but, like... If smoking is something that you enjoy doing and you know that you're dying anyway. I get it. Oh, no, yeah. no. Yeah. It's like, I why, it. why, why am I going to quit? Like, you know no, what I mean? Yeah. What's the point? I like doing it. Go I'm, hard. Exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, smoke a few packs a day. Yeah. Whatever you gotta do. I mean, I don't, I'm saying I don't blame her. No, it's, no, it's my point. I it's, get it. it's just funny to point out is yeah, what I was, yeah. you know. And I'm making a note here because y'all saying that just made me think something, but I can't talk about it yet. Okay. But anyway, when we see them again, Maude is bathing Amanda, who we now see with her hat off has very little hair. Amanda lights another cigarette as Maude wheels her into her room for the night. Maude retires to her own room, but lays awake in bed instead of going to sleep. In the morning, Maude provides Amanda with physical therapy, stretching out her legs. As she leans over, Amanda sees the dangling necklace around Maude's neck. Amanda asks who Maude's saint is, and Maude answers that it's Mary Magdalene. When Amanda said she didn't realize that they made necklaces of Mary Magdalene, Maude admits that she ordered it online. Which, See, I, yeah. <laughs> which I don't, I mean, clearly this is a modern day film, but her saying that was a little surprising yeah. to me just because of <laughs> what we know of Maude yeah. thus far. Right. And in all fairness, a lot of this film feels timeless. It does, yeah. So for her to be like, oh, eBay is where I got <laughs> yeah. it. It's a little like, what? I got it on Etsy. <laughs> But I think the thing is, I personally, I'm not a religious person. You right. know, I don't believe in anything. I barely believe in myself sometimes. Stop. <laughs> but I did not know that Mary Magdalene was considered a saint. I looked it up for this episode and they said considered a saint in Catholic religions. I did not know that. I didn't either. Uh, I, I did, knew yeah. her and Jesus rode tough, but yeah. I didn't. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't know. I uh, think that it's an insight to her, though. Mm hmm. Yes, it's, especially as we go on. Exactly. Yeah. It says a lot about her without saying a lot. Right. Which I think is very good writing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot. I will say the vast majority of this film is pretty impeccably right, written right. to mm-hmm. me anyway. But Amanda suddenly tells Maude that she's prettier than the last one. And <laughs> Quillen's like, my ears are burning. <laughs> I don't know this actress's name. <laughs> but before Maude can react, Amanda starts to text on her phone. Later, Maude inspects a bookshelf to find a series of books written by Amanda on dance. She unveils a stack of framed posters for shows starring Amanda that were tucked away. I don't know that it's cool to just be going through a shit like yeah. this. It's not, dude. But I yeah. mean, she's taking photos down. She's like, yeah, it's <laughs> whatever. Yeah. She's like, she's busy. Yeah. Yeah. Still. <laughs> Have some time. She's in there smoking. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am jealous of anyone with an umlaut in their name, though. Yeah, very cool. My name is just letters. I, yeah. I don't have anything special. <laughs> You can be Travis Hunter. I thought about being Travis. (laughs) (laughs) But she unveils the largest and last of these posters, a drawing of Amanda seemingly upside down with their hair flowing down. Now, this is just an observation I made. I did a lot of back work on this film because I was super Mm -hmm. excited to get into it. And I've never seen anybody mention this. Hmm. But this picture of Amanda that we see kind of recurringly through the film, mm. doesn't it look just like the way the woman was lying on the gurney at the beginning of the film? That's right. very fair. And it's kind of going to definitely stick out to Maude. Yes. Right. That's but very interesting. I was like, why aren't more people talking about this? Because yeah. it struck me immediately. I think there's a lot of things that are like recurring in this right. film. It's another reason why repeated viewings. No, yeah. And th- I don't know. This is kind of, I was talking to my friend um about this movie and she was like this was so emotionally taxing Mm -hmm. that she has taken like she's never rewatched it again (laughs) (laughs) and i get that there's some movies that are like because she was like uh my friend Kristen. she's like hereditary that's not something you just throw on on a tuesday afternoon (laughs) like some movies are so emotionally like I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, you can't, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say I had people I because I had posted about it was somebody said comfort movies or whatever. Yeah. And mine apparently was a list of uncomfortable movies. Yeah. And I didn't realize. <laughs> but I mean, I get that to where this isn't a movie that most people would watch over and over and over. I mean, right, unless right. you're just surface watching it. And it's like you kind of have to, though, because you're not going to fully get all these little moments and callbacks and stuff. On the first time, it's right. just impossible. Yeah. But anyway, that night, as Maude walks past Amanda's bedroom, Amanda gets her attention to ask what she thinks of this curly, dark wig that she's wearing. She looks really good. <laughs> Maude tells her that it looks good. Then she heads downstairs, and as she grabs her coat, someone knocks on the door. Maude lets him in. He's Richard, played by Marcus Hutton. He absently asks her if they're putting her out. And when she's like, no, I was going to meet a friend anyway. He's like, whatever. And goes upstairs and mom leaves. <laughs> First of all, that's a dick move. No, that's very rude. Oh, we're putting you out. Actually, I don't give a yeah, fuck. Like, fuck like, off already. Yeah. <laughs> Not oh, you're concern. still yeah. here? Yeah, it's fuck like, off, help. It's like, <laughs> Jesus God Christ. Damn, dude. I did want to point out that when he walks in, he says, you must be Mary. And she says, no, I'm Maude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So... I have two theories on that. Right. Either one, it's the screenwriter trying to drive the point home, these comparisons between Maude and Mary Magdalene. Right. Mm-hmm. Or Amanda's been talking shit. I s- yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I assumed was Amanda was like, my fucking nurse is fucking Mary, Mary Magdalene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but outside, we hear Maude's voice tell us that she should have just told Amanda she'd be happy to stay in her room, but Amanda must just be embarrassed. A homeless man played by Carl Precop asks her for change and she gives it to him. She asks God to bless him and never waste his pain. But when he's like, what did you say? She just yeah. walks away. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of things here because the, the first thing is that he had asked a person for change before. Yeah. And they didn't give it to him. And he's like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty bold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he did. He did get the change from her. But the, the whole never waste your pain. Yeah. It sounds frightening, but it's actually very nice when you think about it. Right. To say that I hope your pain is worth you know in the end it means something right 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 but i think it does sound like a like a jim's slogan (laughs) (laughs) but it's actually very very kind it is but as we learn more about mod and the way she operates it's still scary yeah Yeah. (laughs) well but we don't know her yet (laughs) so i'm like that this is a sweet girl (laughs) i will i do want to point out because i know there she's kind of walking through the city at this point yeah the shots of the city with the lights is amazing yeah uh-huh. it is they there are a couple scenes like this later on it's just such a nice change because a lot of this film as far as like the color palette 
is intentionally drab. Yes. I think it's a drive the point home uh, with Maud yeah. right. as a person. The cinematographer was Ben Fordsman. I think he does great work. Mm-hmm. But I went and looked through his filmography and I saw that he had done four episodes of The End of the Fucking World. Oh, I love that <laughs> show. And that show has great shots too. It's so, so fucking good. I was like, all right, I see you. But the man calls after her for God to bless her too, which is like, you you heard what you yeah. said. He's a little scared. He's yeah. What? Yeah, well, you too, ma'am. He's shaking. <laughs> but as Maude eats alone in a restaurant, she ponders why someone like Amanda ended up in a town like this one. She stares at a man putting in a false eye as she comments that this place can't be any more appealing to Amanda than it is to her. Which I'm like, that man's just, mind your own business. Yeah. He just stopped at the shop for some chips. I don't yeah. know. Jeez, man. I got and oh, I'm sorry, but it, I... Look, again, not religious, but I'm pretty sure the Bible says something about judging or right. not, uh, not doing She's like, it oh, or... I fucking hate it. <laughs> I'm better than all these people. <laughs> but back outside, she answers her phone asking what has happened. Back at Amanda's house, we can't see Amanda and Richard, but we can hear them arguing as Amanda's dance plays on the TV. He tells her that she needs to be around people, not just locked up all the time. As Maude walks into the room, Amanda calls out, fuck you, to Richard and throws a glass at the doorway, nearly hitting Maude. I just have a couple things here. Mm -hmm. First thing, it's very sad that she's watching her old dance videos. And this is constant. Like It happens a lot in the film. I did want to point out that dude says that she's being dangerously Norma Desmond. Mm -hmm. That's a reference to Sunset Boulevard, the film. Norma Desmond was like a silent film star, but then the talkies came around and killed her career. Right. And then she just kind of like secludes herself in her mansion and kind of goes a little mad. Mm. And so that's why she was like, fuck you. Well, <laughs> Cause that's, that's hurtful. Yeah. I, just for a moment, if we can just sit in the irony of a dancer getting cancer in her spinal cord. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking cruel. And I mean, these are the kinds of questions that people with and without faith are like, well, how can you believe when shit like this happens? Yeah. Right, right. So it's kind of ripe for these conversations between Amanda yeah. and Maude mm-hmm. because it's like my whole life is not only done, but my passion is gone because yeah. my livelihood was taken away. Yeah. So it's a lot. It's a right. p- pretty heavy. And I, I, I've seen people call this more of a character study than a film. Yes. And I feel, I mean, I, I it, it's still a film to me and it's still a horror film to me, but I think that people get that because these characters are so, and we don't get a lot of time with them, no. yeah. but they're so complicated. Like they're just multifaceted. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it could have been very easy to just fall into tropes. Mm-hmm. Like Maude is some quiet, virginal, super religious girl. And then Amanda is some heathen that just want, you know what I mean? Like this could have really, really, been lame as fuck right. <laughs> is what i'm trying to but say but then at that point you're turning it into like a drama and then it's not, yeah and when i say drama i mean like later they ride a bike together and yeah like <laughs> they bond over their likes and all right. that yeah instead it's a character study in the way that we learn kind of who these people are in these small moments yeah mm-hmm. and a film I, I think that's another thing that bothers me a film can be more than one thing this can be a For character sure. study and also right. and a horror film <laughs> yeah yeah people are like no no no, no. no. <laughs> pick one it's like fucking filling out a application and they're like you know what are you You're yeah, like, I, don't, I don't i have no jesus idea jesus christ but Amanda greets Maude with a giggle and richard apologizes for calling her back early because amanda used to be able to drink wow this is a, this is a nice guy yeah. with friends like these yeah Maude takes the cigarette from Amanda's mouth, but in the time it takes her to lean over and put it out, Amanda has replaced it with the fresh one. Just like that little interaction. <laughs> I, I really loved that. No, it was great. And it, all, it felt like a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, ta-da. Yeah. Amanda and Richard awkwardly say their goodbyes. And as soon as he's out of the room, she begins to vomit. Maude looks up at Amanda on the TV screen, looking at us upside down again with her hair flowing down. Wait, did you call him a dick earlier? Because his name is Richard. Nah. <laughs> I don't know if that Not was no intentional mo. or... <laughs> Later, Maude scrubs the vomit out of the carpet as Amanda snacks and talks shit about Richard. About Dick. About Dick. <laughs> when she brings up Dick's hair plugs and Maude denies having noticed them, Amanda tells her that people don't see what they don't want to. Yeah. That's almost like the thesis of this film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's said in such a throwaway yes, line yeah. about this random asshole. Yeah, but right, you're like, right. well, hold on. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. Now. 
Later, Maude gets a glass of water from the kitchen, but as she leaves, the light over her flickers. She pauses for a moment before going into Amanda's room. She gives the water to Amanda, who's already in bed. And when Maude goes to leave, Amanda asks her to stay because she doesn't want to be alone. Maude sits awkwardly in a chair by the bed. Amanda asks how long she's been doing this for work, and Maude tells her it's been about a year. Before that, she worked at a hospital that Amanda Amanda's like, oh, that place is horrible. <laughs> After confirming Amanda's suspicions that she saw a lot of death there, Maude admits that she left because she needed a change. She says that she was spread too thin and it was really what God wanted. When he came into her life, everything changed. Amanda points out that this is a recent conversion to Christianity for her, or excuse me, Catholicism, right? Because mm-hmm. John Paul corrected me before we started. Well, I think it's the saints and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. think that's specific. I assumed it was all under the same umbrella, but... I don't know. As Ruth says in Ozark, I don't know shit about fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I know nothing. No, I got yeah. But she confirms that this was recent and Maude nods. I think that that is a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, it could have been the very stereotypical thing of, oh, she's just always been this devout uh, girl. And then she meets this lady and now it's, you know, the hijinks or whatever. (laughs) But yeah, I guess not. And hilarity (laughs) ensues. But what happens when... (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, The idea, though, I saw in, in an interview in Mashable, Rose Glass said that she thought in the initial writing phase of maybe, you know, giving her this kind of Carrie White backstory where she grew up in this super religious Uh family and it's just been a part of who she was her entire life. But then she realized that she wasn't interested in telling that story. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah, We've seen that. Exactly. She literally said Carrie White. So, you know, (laughs) but to see that somebody has been through and I don't, uh, we'll talk more about what made this change happen Mm -hmm. yeah i think it was more than just that for sure right i think that having that be a catalyst to who she is now is way better than just her parents being like no we're religious so you're gonna be yeah yeah yeah. but amanda asks her if god answers her when she prays and Maud says that sometimes she does hear his voice but most of the time she feels him in her and around her guiding her now that's a little concerning. You know? <laughs> so I'm going to stop you, know you right what? there. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, mm. She says when he's happy with her, there's a shiver or a pulsing in her warm and good. That doesn't sound like God. No. Yeah. I mean, and we'll, we can kind of um, explore more on that right. later. Hey, when's that other nurse coming back, ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did she say? Yeah. Or- we cut to Maude gathering Amanda's laundry and Amanda tells her that nothing seems real anymore. She says that ever since she moved back, all she can think about is her last moment. What will she be looking at? Will anyone be there with her? And then what happens after? Nothing? She begs Maude to tell her that she's wrong. This is so sad. Very sad. Maude goes over to her and whispers in her ear that there is more and not just afterwards. He is everywhere. He sees her and he won't let her fall. Amanda closes her eyes, comforted, and the women smile at each other. Amanda takes Maude's hand and tells her that she's her little savior. We cut to Maude leaving the room. In the hallway, that light begins to flicker again. The flicker becomes a steady pulse, dark, then light. Maude climbs the stairs slowly, but happily, like she's in a trance. Mm -hmm. She breathes heavily and holds onto the wall as she goes up. Once she reaches the landing, she falls onto the ground, gasping and kind of moaning, you know, like in a sexual way. <laughs> yeah. So did she take something or is she? No, nah, she's, uh, she's feeling yeah. God's she's, grace. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, in Joy to the World, they do say the Lord is come. Oh, so. wow. my God. I mean, I guess. I mean, but, uh, she's <laughs> just. Get literal. How did they yeah. spell it? <laughs> <laughs> I was an idiot. I was like, I S <laughs> <laughs> but uh I I <laughs> aside from what Rose Glass called the Godgasm. Yes, right, I right. wanted to talk about that. I, I did want to say that what she did for Amanda in the room. Now again, this is coming from someone with no faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To me, I thought it was the best applications of faith mm-hmm. yeah where she's giving her this comfort in her time of need now right. that's how it is right now yeah and so you see Maud, and you're like well 
she's well meaning yeah mm-hmm. you know and so it's a very interesting thing but yeah. back to back to those godgasms yeah. right <laughs> i read that she said that what she had wanted was because she's non-religious as well rose right, class right. and i can I, tell <laughs> <laughs> i think she grew up with religion but then you know yeah some things happen and eventually whenever she was writing the script she said she needs to find a way to appeal to both believers and non-believers so they understand what Maud is feeling. Mm-hmm. And so something that is universal is sexuality. And so you give this religious thing, this sexual context, and you can see how faith makes Maud feel. Right. And how the presence of God embodies itself in her. And I think that's an interesting take. It is. John Balls is staring blankly. <laughs> So she's like fucking no. the Holy Ghost or something. That's what you're saying. Um, um well, if I that mean, we helps all, you. <laughs> we all interpret these things in our own yeah, way. Yeah, the Lord works in mysterious yeah, ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but this abruptly cuts to the crucifix hanging in her room. And now I'm just laughing at her taking that picture down to hang it up. <laughs> But Maud opens an unpopped bag of popcorn and sprinkles the seeds onto the ground. She kneels on them in front of the crucifix and thanks him. Interesting that she is kind of suffering for her faith now. Yeah. Right. Dude, that would hurt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it <laughs> That's like... All I got. <laughs> that <laughs> like, would hurt. That would suck, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> it would. <laughs> In the next scene, <laughs> I I just feel like I mean I don't know. It seems so. It reminds me of because the, there was this like old the old timers punishment mm-hmm. of like kneeling on broomsticks and shit. Right. Yeah, like it feels like I don't understand because there are some very like zealous and super devout individuals who treat faith almost like a punishment. punishment right, yeah. and it's just so odd to me because she was just having. I mean, an orgasm. Yeah. It was the best time ever. And yeah. then now she's like, I got to kneel on this popcorn. Now you got popcorn on your Yeah, let's knees. all yeah. go to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. It's just very interesting. No, it's a lot. But in the morning, we hear her kind of inner dialogue. A lot of this that we know about Maude is from her talking to us. Right. Mm-hmm. But we see her doing Amanda's stretches in the morning. And she tells God that the work she's doing is noble, but it doesn't take anything special. I disagree, but yeah, I didn't understand that. Yeah, she because she breaks it down. And I'm like, I couldn't do no, that. Yeah, most no, most people couldn't. I think yeah. it takes a very special person to do this kind of work. But yeah, go off, Maude. <laughs> but she knew that he meant her for something more. She's meant to save a soul. We see her dumping Amanda's alcohol down the drain in the kitchen. See, <laughs> out of <Yeah>. pocket. <laughs> I thought the picture was bad. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh Don't no, do dude. Yeah, uh. And I was upset because. Now she's proselytizing. Yeah. You had me in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I was like, this is a very nice girl. And now I'm like, okay, now she's being overbearing. Yeah, now you, you're doing too right. much. You're throwing away her alcohol. Yeah. But we see her throwing out the bottles of alcohol, playing with Amanda's jewelry and spraying herself with Amanda's perfume. This was kind of a, I don't know if an infatuation right. moment. Like, I don't, I don't really know how to process this at this point. It felt, I don't know. Not, I don't want to say envious because that's one of the sins and she would probably yeah. frown upon that. <laughs> but it, it felt odd to me, not in the way of her just like playing dress up or something. Yeah. No, yeah. Like it there's felt... something to it. Yeah. Right. But later as she's doing the dishes, she looks stricken again. She begins to sway on her feet and grasp at her neck. She takes in a big gasp of air, her eyes and mouth stretched unnaturally big and wide. But she's interrupted by a knock at the door. The first time I saw this, I was like, oh, what the fuck was that? Yeah. I was like, yeah. did my eyes like See, that's play a trick on me? Say, right? I'm not tripping, right? Because it, no. it's distorted, but it's so subtle that you're almost no, like, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's re- it's really, really good. And and there was a mild version of it in the first one. Yeah. With just her eyes, I believe. Yeah. And then this one is like going a little overboard. I think it's the addition of the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. It, the mouth has joined the chat yes. and it's it's quite a bit. But I feel I felt bad for her because she's in her own world doing her own thing, yeah. doing the dishes and then having whatever. And then she gets that knock on the door. It's and it's like, over. Yeah, yeah, stop blowing it my ma- sex. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of what you said in the Babadook. What's that? When the boy interrupts his mom and he's oh, like, yeah, what are you doing, I think dude? something bad's going to happen to you. And you're well, like, something bad already whoa. did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
<laughs> the lady was doing her best. All right. right. She just wanted some alone time. Little fucker wanted to bust like, in the door. And yeah. <laughs> Go to bed. Yes. Right. What are you doing? That was a little excessive. Yeah. <laughs> But when she answers the door, Carol, played by Lily Fraser, stands there. Maude tries to turn her away as it is too late for visitors, but Carol pushes her way inside, insisting that Amanda is expecting her. Maude tells her that Amanda is sleeping, but Amanda's bedroom door cracks open. It's like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> way to blow the... Yeah. yeah. Carol gives her a smug look and continues into the house. In her bathroom, Maude scrubs her hands and begins to wash her face, but there's suddenly blood in the water of the sink. She looks into the mirror and her nose is bleeding. As the blood is washed down the drain, she hears Amanda and Carol laughing in the other room. The next morning, Maude is setting up Amanda's shots and medications as Carol walks out of Amanda's bedroom, counting a handful of money. Maude looks troubled as she hears the front door open and close. Maybe be a little more discreet with the cash. Yeah. I mean, it, that's... <laughs> She's like 51, yeah. 52. I was like, Jesus Christ. Dude. Yeah, you could have done that in the car. Yeah. <laughs> in in the gap of the door, mind yeah. you. That's her business. Like if, if someone's she's, in there. She's probably not used to the nurses being like, what the fuck is going that's on? True. <laughs> it's true. The other nurse probably wouldn't have given a no, shit. No, she wouldn't have. She's like, so I can leave early? Right. Or? <laughs> you got this, right? Yeah. But later, as she sits down to a bowl of soup alone in the kitchen, Amanda calls out for her to join her. Maude does, and they sit on a couch in front of a TV in the other room. Maude crosses herself and begins to pray. Amanda shuts off the TV and with a smile on her face, bows her head as well. Maude prays out loud, introducing God to Amanda and thanking him for the meal and for bringing them together. She asks that he bless Amanda's body that has done so many wonderful things in the past, despite it being hurt now. She asks that he bless Amanda's mind because it is shrouded in darkness and asks him to reach out to Amanda the same way he reached out to her. Amanda watches her as she says that last part and looks concerned as Maude begins to sharply gasp for air as she finishes her prayer. Amanda asks if he's here right now and Maude nods her head. Amanda begins to inhale and gasp just like Maude and says that she feels it too. The two of them lie back on the couch and we get shots of them stretching together as we hear them breathing. Amanda reaches out for Maude's hand and as Maude takes it, she takes in that same huge gasp of air, her eyes and mouth once again unnaturally big and wide. This was a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, did y'all think, what What did y'all think at this point? I know she means well, but this was like... Maude yeah, or Amanda? Maude. I was like, yeah. this was... Calm down. <laughs> 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 Do that in your room. Yeah. Okay. She's like, I'll make you see heaven. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I my thing was whenever she first started the prayer, um, well, first of all, I don't think she has she has to introduce Amanda. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> if he's all knowing, he's like, Yeah, I know Amanda Cole. Yeah. She's like, This is my home girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Amanda. Cool. Let me <laughs> jot that down. But I think that at the start of the prayer, she kind of chuckled a little bit. Amanda, Amanda did. Yeah, she uh, has this like little sly smile yeah. on her face uh, too. But then suddenly it shifts. Yeah. And whenever she's also feeling these godgasms, we don't see her, you know, super exaggerated face reaction to it. No. But she is breathing heavily in a way that is very similar to Maude. She mm -hmm. is. For me, it's the flashes of them stretching together. Yes. And them grasping each other's hands right. it felt i don't what i keep saying it felt sexual but it felt sexual right. it, there was some tension there yeah i think that um it's very interesting to me because they're both dealing with loneliness in their own way oh, right. yeah like mod has god mm. it rhymes so it's easy to remember <laughs> and then amanda is sleeping with this woman apparently yeah for cash yeah and obviously Maude, she's got some ideas about that. Right. But all they're doing is combating the same problem that they're feeling. Well, right. I mean, and, and to look a little closer at Amanda, if Dick is any indication of her friends before her illness, he's like, man, you used to be able to drink, bitch. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. not, it feels like she doesn't really have like a support system, if that makes sense. I mean, right. if this one dude is any indication as to the people that she surrounded herself but with. But it's a peek into her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I would wager that a lot of her friends are probably like that. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know. Them touching hands to me was like an interesting moment because it feels like they're bonding in a way beyond what their relationship was intended to be. Yeah, almost right. like finding each other in the dark. Yes. And so from where we go from here it's a little surprising 
and uh, dare I say sad. Yeah. yeah. No shit. But when we see Maude again, she's laying in her bed wearing a shirt and underwear. We see scars on her stomach and she smiles. Later, she helps Amanda get ready and tells her that she looks beautiful and the two of them giggle. Later, Maude unties a bow off of a large book of William Blake paintings and reads a note written on the inside page. For Maude, my savior with love from Amanda. And there's little wings drawn around mm-hmm. savior. Mm-hmm. To me, this felt very genuine. It did, right. Yeah. Yeah. She traces the note with her finger and smiles before flipping through the paintings. Her eyes are like super dilated. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. anybody else noticed oh, that. Yeah. I thought her eyes were flat black. I, they're nearly <laughs> black. <laughs> something else too she has two different colored eyes and you don't see it and i didn't notice it until toward the end of the movie me neither but apparently it was like that the whole time and i mean in moments like that it's very hard to notice that yeah her eyes are are, i mean dilated to black yeah she looks like she just went to the eye doctor (laughs) (laughs) but she hears whispers as she looks over the religious paintings just as she bows her head to pray carol comes into the kitchen talking on her phone and snaps her back to reality Carol's wearing a robe and tells the caller that she can't tonight. And she's like, you know where I am. She giggles as she says that Amanda's all right. She's just a little bit weird. And then she quickly gets off the phone. She admonishes Maude for the face she's making as she gets a bottle of champagne out of the fridge. She pops the cork and spills it all over herself in the floor. Maude gets up and starts cleaning the mess on the floor and asks Carol not to let Amanda drink too much tonight. Carol's like, well, this is mostly for me. And she rolls her eyes as Amanda calls her to come back into the room. So fuck Carol. Yeah, yeah. it's it's like mean. Mm-hmm. The And the fact that she was so f- like flippant with it. Yeah. To Maude, who yeah. she knows. No, yeah. <laughs> she knows that Maude knows Amanda, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this could very easily get back to her. And she seems to not care that she's just flat talking shit. Yeah. In her kitchen. Yeah. Right. And to another client as well. That's just unprofessional. (laughs) What do you say about me? Yeah, I know. If she's going to say that about Amanda, dude. Yeah. She's probably talking shit about that dude too, Amanda. (laughs) Like, oh, it's just, you know, baby dick called me. (laughs) (laughs) But now alone in the kitchen, Maude eats and reads the William Blake book. It talks about, and this was when I was like, hold on. Hmm. It talks about his rejection of organized religion as he saw it as an ugly distortion of true spiritual life. So it just made me wonder, did Amanda know that when she gave her the book? At this point, I'm like, that was an odd thing to give someone who is clearly so devoutly religious in the organized religious sense. Well, I mean... You, she, she has like the stereotypical mindset, kind of. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, I mean, her religion is kind of disorganized because she's not. I, f- to my understanding, because I watched Midnight Mass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, religious expert. Now. Exactly. Yeah. A big part of religion is community. Yeah, right. that's true. And so the fact that she's not taking part in that in all, at all, she's honestly kind of digging on William Blake a little bit in her own way. Okay, that's fair. And uh, also in Midnight Mass, when they were praying, nobody came. <laughs> <laughs> just for the record, I don't want you to get your hopes up. So the whole show, they're Jeez. just, no, they're not. But the show not is brilliant. It's, a, it's an amazing show, but yeah. Yeah, no. zero orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> but ready for bed, Maud shuts off the lights, but stops to listen at Amanda's door where loud music is playing and muffled giggling can be heard. She peeks through the crack in the door to see Carol and Amanda kissing on Amanda's couch. How's the peeping, Tommy? Yeah, no yeah. shit. <laughs> Carol gets up and starts to dance for Amanda. As Maude watches, Amanda's smiling face grows somber. She also kind of covers herself up a little. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's her. Because she did not look at Maude. She did not no. see Maude was there. No. no. So I don't know if she's just like thinking about her past and yeah. her dancing, and her, yeah. Yeah, and her future, unfortunately. Yeah. Right. Very sad. It's Very. super, super sad. And you get a lot of these small, like, character moments. Yeah. Because literally no words are spoken. She just has a look on her face, and yeah. she does one action, yeah. yeah. and you get so much from it. But in the morning, Maude waits at the top of the stairs for Carol to leave Amanda's room. As soon as the door opens, Maude hurries down to her and is like, I need to talk to you. And she pulls her into the kitchen and drops the bomb. 
Carol needs to stop seeing Amanda and she needs to leave her alone. She tells Carol that Amanda has big things going on and she needs to focus on that. And Carol just doesn't fit into things anymore. <laughs> Carol, I'm like the fucking yeah. audacity of this woman. See, it's ratcheting it up because yes. it's like, okay, so she moved a picture. All right, yeah. we can get with that. Yeah. Well, now right. she's dumping alcohol yeah. down the thing. Hold on. Wait, now you're ruining her love life? <laughs> like, what, the, what, what are Jesus. you doing, dude? <laughs> Carol tells her that her patient's sex life is none of her business and she's fucking 100% right. Mm -hmm. But Maude says that she knows Amanda's giving her money and Carol gently reminds her, again, none of her fucking business, which it's not. Maude tells her that she's trying to be respectful, but she just doesn't think this is a good idea. Carol tells her that she has an issue with the fact that Amanda likes women, but Maude, and I was like, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you could have an eight inch cock for all I care. I was like, holy oh, Lord. Yeah. Maude. Yeah. God's like, heavens <laughs> to Betsy. <Yeah. laughs> she says she would still have an issue after the way Carol looked at her last night. And I, I, I get that. Yeah. See, and that's where I'm torn. I get It's not her place. Not at right, all. Right. That's, Amanda's business and Carol's business mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with you. Amanda is on her deathbed. Yeah. Doing one thing. The only thing seemingly. Right. That right. makes her feel a little alive. Yeah. But also Carol sucks. So <laughs> yeah. she does. But I mean, and when she's with Amanda, it seems like she's being very attentive and loving with her. Mm -hmm. It's fucked up that that's how she's acting behind her back. But Amanda doesn't know no, but and she, Amanda, I mean, this is an arrangement. She too easily could have heard that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know how thin the walls are in this place. Yeah, and it's I'm, a very nice house. If, if I'm giving you money, at least give a little shit. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? don't just, just walk away and at least pretend. Yeah, like good lord. I mean, here's all I'll say. In mod, there is a very sweet, painfully misguided woman. Yes, right. Yeah, and you see that she very much feels that she's doing the right things. But, but uh, I, I still have to double down that this is not her no, fucking it's business. Not, no, it's, it's none of her not. business. This is completely out of line for her to be doing this. Oh, of course. And it could get her fired. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but And if she were fired for it, she deserves it. Yeah. Like, this is crazy. She couldn't file a complaint. No. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about the look last night, she's like, what even was that? Do you think you're too good for Amanda? And this is some kind of joke. Carol says that that's not the case, but Maude doubles down. Amanda's dying, and it's her responsibility to take care of her. This is a life or death situation, spiritual and on another level. That's where we have a problem. Yeah, whole, pump the brakes. Yeah. yeah. She tells Carol that there's no offense, and she's sure that she's great in bed and everything, but you're a waste of time right now. <laughs> Carol tries to remind her that she's just Amanda's nurse. And Maude says that whether she likes it or not, Amanda's very vulnerable right now. And she doesn't need to spend her last days worrying about a girl that doesn't care about her. Carol's like, I do care about Amanda. And Maude's like, not enough. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Girl." laughs> she's like, you're about a, a two. I need you. Yeah. <laughs> I Again, the thing is, is the, the message behind what she's saying is understandable. It is. Right. However... It's too not much, your place. Too much, yeah, mod, too much. You're coming in too hot. <laughs> yes. She's not going to listen to you. <laughs> no, no, yeah. not at all. And the other thing I do want to point out is that it it is very interesting to me. And I do appreciate the fact that they make mention that she is not. It's not about two women being together. Right. right. This is simply about her thinking that this is not good for Amanda. Right. Although at the same time, I do wonder how much it's not good for Amanda and how much it's not good for Maude. Yeah. No, absolutely. Right, right. Because how she's like, the time you're spending with her, I'm eating soup in the kitchen. Alone, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> My thing is, you don't know how long they've been doing this. No, this you just is, rocked up, what, yesterday? <laughs> literally, this is their arrangement. Like, right. mind your own fucking business, dude. She said she's expecting me. Yeah. yeah. She isn't like, and Amanda is her name? And she just <laughs> she walked right into the bedroom. She's yeah. walking around the house in a robe. This yeah. is not new. Drinking milk from the carton yeah. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> All I'm saying is, Maude, you got some nerve, dude. Yeah. But Carol tries to leave, and Maude asks if she's going to listen, and Carol's like, whatever you say, Maude. Maude's like, really? She's yeah. like, well, don't tell her I said <laughs> to do this, but don't hurt her feelings either. Just make something up. Carol's like, whatever, and she leaves. Maude starts crossing the doors in the house. I don't know if she's using water or oil mm. or what, 
But we hear her say <laughs> she thinks that that went well. <laughs> <laughs> she says Amanda's phone has been silent all day and it really must be a relief to Amanda as well. She goes into Amanda's room as she's sleeping and continues to cross the walls in her room. She says that Amanda radiates peace and reminds her of herself when she first came into contact with God. We see her bathing Amanda that night. And as the two of them laugh, Maude's voice tells us that they don't need anyone else. See, and that's where you got it. You're doing too much. Is it safe to say at this point that there is some attraction here? That's how I read it. I mean, well, her saying that sentence was a lot. (laughs) Just the two of us building castles in the sky, I believe she said. (laughs) (laughs) But I just, I mean, I feel like it's sad because it's coming from a place of her trying to snuff out this loneliness that she feels inside. Yeah. And again, she feels like she's doing the right thing. Yeah, but man, it's not. No, it's not. It's It's not, not, dude. But we see Maude happily walking down the street at night. Someone calls after her, though, addressing her by the name Katie. But Maude's smile drops from her face and she starts to walk faster. The woman catches up to her and hugs her, calling her Katie again. This is Joy, played by Lily Knight. I do want to say before this conversation happens, Mm -hmm. when she's walking through the street, there's this shot of all the lights behind her. But there's also, because it appears to have rained, right? Yeah. the street is like soaked. Yeah. Right, and right. so the lights are reflected underneath her as well. And so it feels like she's this kind of bland thing surrounded Around, yeah, by light. Wow. Right. And it just, again, echoes this loneliness. Yeah. And it really sets the tone, even if you're not like consciously picking that up. It's right, just right. like you feel it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Joy asks how Maude has been and Maude tells her she's been good. Joy's like, well, I haven't been bad myself. I'm just tired because the hospital's been a madhouse. Mm. And so you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joy tells her that everyone thought she left town because no one's seen her out and about anymore. But Maude says she's still been around. She's doing private care. Joy is surprised to hear that she's still nursing, but she cuts herself off before saying why she's surprised. She asks who Maude is working for, and Maude says a private agency. Joy's like, well, do they know what happened? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Maude's like, yeah, they do. Uh, I would be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Because no matter what happened, you don't bring it up like yeah. that. She's like, Not like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. After what you did? <laughs> she was shook. I thought, <laughs> I thought you were banned. And never again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Joy looks skeptical. Maude says that she has to go and tries to leave, but Joy stops her. She writes down her number and gives it to Maude in case she ever wants to talk or go get a drink. And then they walk away from each other. This was a very interesting little, like, what What was that? Who the fuck is Katie? Yeah. That's, that's the point, is Katie. Yeah. yeah. That was nice of her, though. It was. <laughs> I mean, she had to do something after being like, you? Yeah, well, <laughs> You're still taking care of people? <laughs> I know, but she didn't have to say anything at all. True. Like, yeah. yeah. It gave me like Dick Whitman yeah. vibes. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> she really could have just gone to work the next day and been like, I fucking saw Katie, yeah. dude. Like, she's still here. <laughs> yeah. But back at Amanda's house, Maude takes her blood pressure and then chastises her for cheating at solitaire. And like, she's like, you cheated. And Amanda's like, did I? And Maude's like, yeah, you fucking did. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm sorry, because there was such there was a playful. It was at first. There was a glee and glimmer of like light in her eyes. And she's like, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) let let her cheat. Let her have fun. fun You cheat. It's like, oh, my God. She was having a blast. And no, this isn't for the championship. (laughs) (laughs) Just let her do it. But she fixes the cards back and Amanda's phone starts to ring and she asks Ma to give her a moment, dismissing her from the room. She asked Maude to make her a cup of tea before happily answering the phone. And she's like, I didn't expect to hear from you. Maude stands in the kitchen, boiling water and eavesdropping as Amanda asks, what do you mean? Why? The sound of the boiling gets louder and louder until it cuts off. And we see Amanda sitting alone in her room. Maude brings her the tea and tells Amanda that it would be nice to go out sometime and go to the theater. Amanda interrupts her, saying that she wants to go to bed. Maude's like, it's five o'clock. And Amanda goes, I'll go to bed when I damn well like. Mm -hmm. Maude concedes and bathes her. This is, I mean, obviously we know what that phone call was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kind of. Because I I was very confused. Not right now. Yeah. Okay. I get that. Because right now I'm like, wow, man. Carol just broke up with her. Yeah. Same thing. I thought that I was like, okay, I was wrong. She said, I can't see you no more. Whatever. I I still think she did. But we'll talk. We'll talk more. Right. 
But that night, Maude sits alone watching TV until she's distracted by whispers again. She immediately goes into the kitchen, gets the stove burner hot, and brings her hand down onto it. She whimpers and pulls it away. So what did we learn? Don't touch the stove. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's called parenting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I do you wanna, only do that once. <laughs> yeah, That's true. I do want to call out the whispers that seem to be getting more frequent. Yes. Um definitely indicative of a thing yeah mm -hmm. that we can talk about later yeah we will talk about it later mm -hmm. in the morning Maud gives amanda her shots and medications with a bandaged hand as amanda scrolls through her phone Maud brings her breakfast but amanda doesn't acknowledge her continuing to text and laugh at her phone she tells Maud that she'll make her a list of things to pick up in town for tonight we see Maud walking past the beach on her way back to amanda's holding grocery bags as a loud ringing sound blares I do want to say about the interaction they just had. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are the only two people in the house. Yeah. And she's still alone. Yeah. yeah. Because Amanda's on her phone. This is what makes me feel like that conversation happened that night. Amanda's like, fuck this. Day's over. I want to go to bed. Yeah, yeah. And then I think another conversation happened later. Mm. Okay. And see, I, we'll, we'll talk more in a minute. Okay. <laughs> When she's walking here, that's when I noticed her eyes. Oh, okay. And I that, still yeah. didn't notice them. I, I had to rewind and I was like, is that supposed to be that way? I was like, because. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll let you know when I noticed because there's very little movie left. Say, <laughs> <laughs> it's about 20 minutes till the movie's yeah. over. <laughs> but back at Amanda's house, there's a party going on. Maude prepares snacks in the kitchen as the guests convene in the living room. Amanda comes in on her wheelchair and smiles at Maude, but yells out in excitement when Carol walks in, modeling her gown. Return of the Mac. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And that's why I was like, what? Yeah. You just, because it seemed like she broke up. You know what I thought was going to happen was she was just going to find another woman. Yeah, but I yeah. think there's something here. I don't think for Amanda, I don't think it's just transactional. All right. Well, I mean, that's fair. Although money is exchanging hands. It is on Carol's side. Fair. But for Amanda, I think it's genuine. a small price to pay like to be with her. Yeah. But let's revisit this in like two minutes. All okay. right. But the two sit on the couch in the living room talking. In the kitchen, Hillary, played by Noah Bodner, comes in to ask Maude if the cake is ready. I don't know if Maude prepared this cake, mm -hmm. but... She's trying and failing to use a match to light the candles with her bandaged hand. But Hillary just takes out a lighter, quickly lights the candles, takes the cake from Maude and is like, grab the plates. And yeah. she turns off the lights. So I'm like, did Maude make this? And now she can't carry the cake. Yeah. Like, that's how I took it. <laughs> that's a little tough, I'd say. It's yeah. kind of mean, but. As if it wasn't bad enough. Right. Yeah. But Maude follows her with the plates and the music stops. They all start to sing happy birthday to Amanda as the candles and the sparkler on the cake illuminate her face. And they're singing happy birthday for free. They are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but Maude stays in the darkness of the doorway. Amanda blows out the candles, but when she starts to cough and can't finish, Carol blows out the rest for her. Maude turns the lights back on and the music starts back up as she sets down the plates and napkins next to the cake. Maude can hear Hillary ask how Amanda and Carol met. And Amanda tells her that they met online, but that Maude doesn't like Carol. She says she still can't figure out if Maude is a bigot or if she's jealous, but she went behind her back to try to scare Carol away. She looks up at Maude, wanting her to hear what she's saying as she says that it was all to save her soul. Completely shook, Maude tries to excuse herself and walk away, but Amanda's like, no, I'm talking to you. This is what makes me think that, yeah, Carol broke up with her, and later Amanda's like, what What happened? And, then and she... Carol's like, look, fucking Maude yeah, cornered yeah. me in the kitchen. That's how I feel like it went. I, there's something about the way that this scene is shot. Her voice is so low, right? Very clear over the sound of the music and the party going on. Yeah. To me, I didn't. I had a theory about that section at the very least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where um, can we not talk about it yet? Probably not. Okay. I just want. That's kind of shitty to do at a party. And, oh yeah, in I front mean, of everyone. Not only that, that's your nurse. When everybody leaves, I yeah, mean, she's. She's giving you medicine. <laughs> She's like, I mean, I pro I'd probably be like, fuck. Well, be a little nicer. Yeah. Could you imagine talking all that shit and being like, so bath time? Yeah. <laughs> B12 shot, please? Yeah. I feel like um, 
this almost feels like a dream right that, that's for what me I, it's yeah it's like uh the way that like you said she's saying it so low mm-hmm. uh, but then when she starts to walk away amanda's like nah bitch like i'm talking to you that it's like oh my god like i was like i felt like i was in trouble yeah. <laughs> i didn't want to say that yet oh okay <laughs> but i guess we can now i thought that at least this first part of the conversation didn't happen right Mm -hmm. because her voice even sounds different it does than from when she was just talking at on the couch earlier so i think that this might be something that maud is putting upon herself perhaps i didn't interpret it that way but now that you said it it totally could be all right yeah but Amanda says that Maude is her savior and she got a little carried away. She asks Maude if she was indecent and Maude says, no, she's lost. And Amanda starts to laugh. Maude tries to walk away, but starts breathing heavily and stumbling. It's like, no, not a godgasm now. Yeah. <laughs> Two people come up behind her and drape a napkin and a ribbon over her head like a saint, which right. is, this is too much. Th- that I was like, okay, so this is really happening. Yeah. Because her friends are attacking her now. Yeah. You heard what the fuck she just said. Yeah. I think uh, they were honoring her. <laughs> <laughs> I think Maud should have said thank you. Yes, uh, they should have prayed. Right, this nice hat we just fucking got you. <laughs> and you just not even your uh, birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Amanda proclaims her to be her little saint. Maud takes everything off and tries to walk away, but Amanda grabs her by the hand. She tells Maud not to take anything she says seriously. She's just trying to get her to loosen up. She says she's a beautiful young woman and she should have fun while she still can. And coming from Amanda, I feel like this is like she means that. Right. Like you don't understand what could happen. Now, this part, I believe, is actually happening. Yeah. I feel like there's a switch. And this because to me, Amanda never seemed cruel. Mm -hmm. No. And so this feels more in line with the Amanda that I've seen so far. Yeah. Where she's like, look, you know, as you said. This happened to me at a yeah. young age. Have fun. You're young right. and you're healthy. Like live. All yeah. Right, all right. But Maud's got all the other shit boiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In her brain, like that bolognese or whatever yeah. she made. <laughs> the red sauce. Yeah. But Maud tells her that she has more important things on her mind. Amanda concedes. How could human frivolity compared with God's warm, hard pulsing? And Maud slaps the shit out of her. Wow. Well, I mean. <laughs> Getting a little out of hand. I was like, oh, dude, you just lost your job. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's... Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, no, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> Her lawyer liked that. <laughs> But people, so did mine. <laughs> <laughs> but people pull her away and Amanda looks up at her with blood coming out of her nose. Maude doubles over and we cut to her sitting in an office. <laughs> Maud asks the agency woman if it's possible for her to just talk to Amanda. The woman is like, hell no. Yeah, Yeah, I I think we're past that. Yeah, she says they're lucky that Amanda isn't pressing charges on them. She says that Amanda also expressed other concerns about Maud and asks if she's all right. But Maud is fixated on a pin that the woman keeps clicking. And after a second, she's like, no, yeah, I'm fine. I beg to differ. Yeah, Yeah, I think we uh, might want to farm that out to another (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But Maude goes back home with her bags and begins to unpack. She unpacks the crucifix and lays it down on the religious altar she made on top of her dresser. Later, we hear her praying. She tells God that what she feels of him now is pain. We see her writhing in pain in her bed as she says that the gnawing and burning might be ulcers, appendicitis, or even cancer. Aunt Acid's bubble in a glass of water as she tells him that she doesn't see what he's trying to teach her, if that's even what he's doing. We see her walking around at night in her underwear and a shirt, her small apartment cluttered with her clothes. We see her standing at a beach looking confused as she says that all of this seems like a waste. If you recall the first shot of her in the apartment, it was like pristine and yeah. almost yeah. like... Yeah, her pressed uniform was yeah. hanging up. Yeah. Now it's just really echoing what she's feeling. Yeah. At her table, she unbandages her hand as she says that she was ready and open and now this was her reward. She's unemployable and unoccupied. At the beach, she sees a man playing a violin, but looks away upset. I'm like, that dude was uh, fucking tearing it up. And she was not appreciating yeah. it. That I did want to point out the score of this film. Uh-huh. Yes. I know that that dude was playing violin and may or may not have been part of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I love how subdued and... It's like tense. Yeah. Right. Now, there's moments that it's frightening. Yeah. And we'll get to that in a bit. Yes. But she ponders that maybe God isn't as wise as she thought, or maybe she just wasn't paying enough attention. 
In her apartment, she tries to clean the burn on the back of her hand, but winces away from it. She starts picking at the skin around the wound, and she says that she can't help but think of this as an act of spite. If this is how he treats someone loyal, she doesn't want to think of how she treats those who have turned their backs. At the beach, she sees a woman wheeling. It's Amanda, right? Yeah. Yeah. A woman wheeling Amanda up to the water. Back in her room, she tears a chunk of skin. I guess the scab of the... I don't know. It was Yeah, I think it was. She tears it off her hand and the crucifix falls on its own off of her dresser. It's like, no, wait, stop. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I can't watch this. I forgot one thing I did want to point out earlier whenever she's back in her apartment after being fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a roach on the wall. I did not notice that. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But we cut to Maude walking down the street at night, briefly looking up at the church before we see her in a bar. She sits alone at a table drinking beer. She's wearing like makeup for the first time that we've seen in the film and her hair's down and she's wearing a revealing shirt by her standards. Mm -hmm. She makes eyes with the man on the other side of the bar and they smile at each other until he begins to kind of look uneasy Mm -hmm. and she continues to stare at him drinking her beer. Then we cut to her and... I'm sorry, jerking him off in the back of the bar. Jerking him off? She she was. What else was she doing? I mean, we were saying Godgasms before. (laughs) She's godding him off. (laughs) What do you want me to say? She's giving him a hand. Okay. It was very just... Clinical. Yeah, right. (laughs) Well, she is a nurse. Right to Okay. (laughs) But once he's done, she just walks off. We see her sitting alone at the table again, and the guy walks past her, and he's like, I'll see you later. Yeah. And then he gets his friend, and they dip <laughs> the fuck out. I got to say something very quickly, because <laughs> <laughs> I found a lot of comedy in this. This is yeah. kind point. of hilarious. It's hilarious well, and sad. Because as she's doing it, she goes, not yet. And he goes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then as soon as they leave, he, he does say that, see you later. But yeah, he's like, we got to go. Yeah, yeah well... <laughs> Somebody's going to find that. Oh, yeah. God. You want to be gone. Is it? That. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the crime scene. You yeah. got to get out of there. God. The Lord is come. Now, <laughs> we see, <laughs> we've already established. <laughs> we see her sitting alone at her table again. She just continues to drink, watching a group of people laughing together. She starts to laugh, too, with them, but they side eye her. This is so sad. It is. Because again, it's like she's almost mimicking yeah. what she's seeing. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, bitch. And she just like snaps <laughs> it back. See, and OK, these moments, right. I I remember seeing an interview with Rose Glass where she had said that in order to kind of not sell the movie, but almost give like an elevator pitch to a executive. Uh huh. She was like, imagine Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver, except he's a woman in a seaside town in England and she's ca- and he's Catholic. Right. And the guy was like, oh, okay, I get it. These moments feel very Travis Bickle. Yeah. Like, because he, in Taxi Driver, he was trying to live, I guess, the life that he thought was, yeah. you know. That's a, re- that's really, yeah. It, there are these comparisons. That's a solid observation. Mm-hmm. And again, it just drives the point home. I, I love character studies, I guess. Yeah. Because this is a prime example. For sure. And it's a horror film. Yes. <laughs> what can, what more can you ask for? Oh, yeah, come on, man. We see her at the bar after taking shots and getting another beer. Then we cut to her in the bathroom calling Joy. She asked her if she wanted to go for a drink and hang out because she wants to talk. It sounds like Joy agrees, but Maude tells her it's odd that she invited her to hang out because she never thought that Joy liked her all that much. She laughs and then she's like, oh, no, no, man. Like yeah. It sounds like Joy <laughs> took offense to her saying that. She tells Joy that she's at a bar with some friends, but they're about to leave. It sounds like Joy cancels on her and Maude apologizes, calling herself stupid, and then she hangs up. I don't understand why she would take offense to that. When when they met in the street, she was like, after what you <laughs> did? <laughs> like, it's obvious that you got a little bit of animosity. Yeah. I mean, there's something weird between their relationship. I do think that it was very sad that she had pretended to have friends there with her yeah Yeah. well even when uh that dude came over she was like no i'm meeting a friend and no she wasn't oh i mean she made a friend yeah no you know tonight she she brief (laughs) briefly yeah no it's like when vince mcmahon wrestled god and (laughs) a light just comes into the table and just sitting in front of a chair pulls out and (laughs) 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 no i but i i feel very bad for her is what i'm trying to say i'm not doing a great job saying it but no it's really sad 
bad, but I'm still stuck on Vince McMahon. <laughs> 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 like, uh, the dude is a fucking He's mad a character. man. But Maude sits at her table alone and drunk, fixating on all the sounds of eating and drinking in the building. She looks down at her glass of beer and sees like a like a vortex, right. like a tornado forming in it. It's, oh, you're just drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I see that yeah. every time I drink. How many shots have you had, Maude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this scares her and she jumps up, knocking over her glass and bumping the table of a group behind her. When she turns and looks at their table, the tornadoes are forming in all of their glasses as well. She turns around to run and bumps straight into a man spilling his drink. This is Christian, played by Turlo Convery. He smiles and tells her that she owes him a drink. Did you get any Emily Rose vibes as she was sitting at the bar? Almost like the misophonia, like with the people eating and drinking. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and she's right. like covering her ears. Yeah. I mean, there's a uh, comorbidity with uh, yeah. There's certain some things. parallels. Yeah. yeah. But we smash cut to. Well, Maude showing Christian the flesh. <laughs> right. We smash cut to smashing. Yeah. <laughs> Does a drink mean something different across the pond? <laughs> I mean, well, he talked to her. The other guy got a handy. He didn't even say a word to yeah. her. That's true. But Except, she's like, sorry. <laughs> she's like, oh, you're not mad at me? Okay, let's go. I guess. But she's on top of him and we cut back and forth between her and this moment with Christian and her giving CPR to an elderly woman as a nurse. She looks down at her hands on Christian and she's performing chest compressions on him and suddenly his entire chest caves in. Maud screams and looks down at him and he has blood pouring from his mouth. She jumps off of him, but we see that Christian is fine. I screamed too. Uh, Yeah, no, I, it, w it was jarring. Yeah, yeah, why are you thinking about that? Well, well I mean... <laughs> I, I feel like now we have the answer to what happened before. Right, right. Absolutely. But and why right now? Well, <laughs> I mean, I, she's I, got PTSD. I think. Yeah, well, clearly. Yeah. And, uh, and something's telling me that she's never not thinking about it. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Well, that's fair. But it's a lot. I yeah. do. I do want to point out. I, I do. I teach CPR. And one of the most frequently asked questions is if I give CPR too hard, can I make, you know, someone's chest cave in basically. Mm -hmm. But the answer is like, no, if you give CPR, you can break someone's rib Yeah. if you give it too hard. But it's one of those things that you'd rather have a broken rib and be like, hey, that guy broke my rib. Yeah. Then be like, but I'm alive. oh, no, I have a full yeah. set, but I'm also in the ground. Yeah. But I read on Vulture that a nurse told Rose Glass this story. Yeah. And it was a very specific circumstance that allowed for this to happen. I guess a woman had had open heart surgery and the incision and the stitches and everything were fresh. Oh, my God. And so I guess the nurse did give her CPR because I think she coded. Mm -hmm. And when she was giving her CPR, her hands went through the woman's chest oh. and kind of mashed everything. Oh, no. And the woman ended up dying. And so oh. this <laughs> obviously inspired this. Right, right. But thankfully, she asked if she could use that story. Yeah. She got permission. She wasn't just like, I'm going to write this down yeah, and use yeah. it. Obviously, like that was not her fault. No. no. But I feel like you would carry that. Like, how do you not? Oh, my God. Well, the thing how is. How do you get over that is what I'm trying to say, I think. I feel like any kind of situation like that medically is already stressful enough. Yeah. yeah. And then to add this trauma on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like, dude, no wonder. And imagine all the other shit that Maude has seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you have well, this Well, she was happen. like, you saw a lot of death. And Maude was like, yup. Yeah. I yeah. was going to say, they said how bad it was. Yeah. Exactly. So you, you start to understand why she would start to think other things, right. want to see herself away from this, mm -hmm. and not the field entirely, but this facet of it. Yeah. And then you start to understand her more as a character. Yeah. It's like, it's a lot. And it only gets worse, folks. This is oh, pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, as what did they say? Gold star on... Uh, last podcast. I'm so glad you started listening <laughs> to them. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for telling me to. This is a gold star warning. Yes. For, for those of you who listen to last podcast. <laughs> but... Christian goes to comfort her and we get a flash of her in the room, bloody in the corner with the woman on the gurney that we saw at the beginning of the film. Christian kisses her and tries to hold her, but she doesn't respond to him. He gets on top of her and she tells him to stop, but he doesn't. Maude just lays there staring blankly as this dude assaults her. Yeah. And 
It's so sad because I genuinely thought he was going to comfort her. I did too. I was like, finally, she found a nice guy. Yeah. Like, or a nice An, person. Yeah, a human being, a human connection. But it's like, no, God damn it. Even dude. this is ruined by something horrible. And then Rose Glass really just makes us sit in this moment. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. And now I would prefer that his chest was crushed. Yeah. It's like, no, <laughs> now do it for yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. But we cut to Christian lighting his cigarette as he lays in bed. He tells her that he remembers her. She used to be out all the time. In fact, he's pretty sure that she slept with his friend. He remembers her, the lovely little nurse. Maud gets her shit and fucking leaves. See, so this to me, because what you're thinking initially is you're like, okay, wow. So she, what she's doing is she's taking Amanda's advice. And trying to right. live. But in reality, what she's doing is what she used to do. She's slipping back into it. Yeah. And I mean, this is what what uh joy told her earlier we mm-hmm. haven't seen you yeah. out like, yeah no mod was out she and about. lived the life yeah katie yes yeah was out and about but we get this great sideways shot of mod stumbling down the stairs toward her apartment door once inside she drinks from the tap and sits down at her dining room table with the water in the sink still running was this that staircase like yeah, angle? yeah. dude i love that yes. so much with her head in her hands she says that she did everything she changed She did what he told her to do. She begs for him to not let her fall again, and she asks for guidance. Maud begins to cry until she starts to shake. Suddenly, she projectile vomits, and fireworks start going off outside her window. She rushes to the window before throwing herself onto the floor. She begins to convulse, and we see the water running over her sink and onto the floor. She contorts, spitting up as water continues to run. She freezes in a silent scream, and we see the cockroach crawling in the corner again. Slowly and silently, Maud begins to levitate in the middle of her apartment, exorcist style. It's an amazing shot as we see the fireworks still exploding behind her. She swings her arm and leg slightly, and we zoom in on her face as she opens her eyes. It is an amazing sequence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Haunting visual with her floating. Yes. If I recall, the music is kind of pulsing. Right. Almost yeah. like what she said it feels like when God is around. Right. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting thing. I can definitely see how this could be a very life changing situation for her. Yeah. To have felt that she experienced this. But I can also explain a lot of it away. I couldn't until I watched it the second time. Hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. Right. We can't talk about yeah. it yet. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't. Uh, I couldn't. I was like, what the fuck yeah. is happening? <laughs> I also want to clarify. I think I said that she just lays there while he assaults her. And I don't mean that as putting it on her. I mean that it's still assault, even though yeah. she's right. just laying there. That's how I meant that. I don't want to make it sound like, no, no, no. you know, I, whatever. I got what you meant. You're saying she was laying there. Yeah. And it doesn't that's still assault she told him no no so that's that's just to be clear no i got mm-hmm. you and christian should be smoting he should uh have his chest caved in. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but in the morning maude cleans her apartment and takes a shower as we hear her thanking the lord for his mercy as her revelation came just in time she's ashamed that she fell so easily we see her getting rid of the clothes in her dresser even ripping some up and burning them I'm not sure about that. I think that was the dress that she wore. Mm. That oh, night. that's well, really that's sad. understandable. Yeah. She pokes nails through a picture. Was that Mary Magdalene? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Of Mary Magdalene. But she pokes nails through it, places it in the bottom of the inside of her shoes and then settles her foot inside. Nobody's telling you to do that. No. no. Yeah. I don't think uh, Dr. Scholes would yeah. be. No, <laughs> again, this is interpretation. Right. Yeah. I have post it I've been, we're recording this in October and I've been watching a movie every day in October. Mm-hmm. I know T, you have too. Mm-hmm. But I posted that I watched this and our friend Miguel was like, I want to get a pair of those shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want a pair? <laughs> no, Miguel. I had read that initially... Rose Glass had said that she had wanted to have a scene of Mm -hmm. self-flagellation. But then when she thought about it more, she was like, I think Maude would be more creative. Right, right. And so this was more creative. Yeah. I feel like it's part doing it in her mind to please God. Yeah. And the other part, her punishing herself for for straying. Falling. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just awful. Yeah. Yeah. uh, No. It's horrible. Yeah. Don't do that. No. No. Uh. 
But she looks up at the crucifix that is now at its place on the wall above the shrine because it was just sitting on the dresser. Mm -hmm. But she looks up at it. She stands up, putting her weight on her feet. We hear this horrible crunching sound and then Maude screams. She walks slowly and deliberately down the street, breathing heavily. She goes back to the beach and looks through the little viewfinder thing to look Mm. at Amanda's house on the hill. And then she just slowly walks away. It's a little uh, stalkery. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Back at home, Maude looks up Amanda online. It was like, are you Maude or are you Joe Goldberg? I was like, what's really going on? She's like, you. You. (laughs) (laughs) You. I see. You. You. But we hear her say that she should have expected resistance because nothing worthwhile comes easy. She looks through videos of Amanda dancing and photos of her, and she scrolls through articles of Amanda's depression. We see that shot of Amanda in the video again, upside down and looking up at us before Ma just closes her laptop. To your point earlier, I feel like a, I don't want to say a lesser filmmaker, but I do want to say a lesser film would flash. Exactly. Yeah. There would be mm-hmm. insert shots of the hospital. Yeah. But it's just left for us to draw the parallel, which uh-huh. I, I like. But she looks over the note that Amanda wrote in the William Blake book while repeating her name. She tells Amanda that she called to her and that had to mean something. She cuts out images from the book and reminds herself to never waste her pain. A call back to the homeless man. Yeah. Right. She hangs up Amanda's note on her wall Later, we see her flicking a lighter on and off while we see images of Amanda at the time that Maude was with her, including the one of her with her new caretaker at the beach. For me, I was like, she's getting ideas. Yeah. yeah. And go on. They probably yeah. Ain't <laughs> yeah. We cut to Maude walking toward the beach with the squelching sound every time she takes a step. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh, my God. It wasn't good. There's a woman eating her lunch at a bench and Maud goes over and asks to join her. The woman welcomes it and Maud sits down. She gets the woman, Esther, played by Rosie Sansom, to volunteer that she works with a private agency. Maud gushes about how much she respects anyone in the medical profession because it's almost the most important <laughs> thing that you can do. It made me laugh. She's like, there's well, one. Not, yeah. not, not completely, though. Yeah. Esther thanks her, saying it's not very glamorous, but she does love it. Maude asks what's wrong with the patient she cares for right now. And Esther's like, I can't give you any details, Mm -hmm. but we're good friends. And it is a little odd because honestly, she doesn't even have to know that she's caring for one patient or that. Yeah. So it's, it's Maude really tipping her hand. (laughs) So the dancer, it's like, wait, what the fuck? She used to dance, right? (laughs) (laughs) Esther says that that's what she loves about the job. You can easily build such meaningful relationships, but that makes things harder at the end when the patient inevitably dies. She says that honestly, she doesn't think she'll be with this one for much longer. She introduces herself, but when she asks Maude's name, Maude just fucking gets up and leaves. <laughs> yeah, that's rude. Yeah, it Come was. on, fucker. It's, <laughs> fucker. it's jarring. It's jar- it was very for me, okay. You're living in a situation where you're you're kind of I don't want to say she's acting like a double agent, but yeah. no, she is. She's gotta keep some things secret. Right. Yeah. She has shown her face to this woman. Yeah. And then she became memorable. Right. Yeah. And she By became being fucking weird. Exactly. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to do. And now she can be a topic of conversation. Yeah, when I was on my lunch break, Amanda, uh this I saw woman. this woman. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, was she wearing a blank? Did she have a Saint, you know, Mary yeah. Magdalene? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was she wearing an Etsy necklace? Yeah. And now you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but back in her apartment Maud wonders if she got this all wrong we see all of the religious iconography in her apartment as she wonders if god is smirking or indifferent or if he sees her as stupid she wonders if that's how amanda saw her too i thought it was mean because she said do you see me as stupid like that woman yeah i was like dude she was a woman that's <laughs> yeah. seemed lovely yeah. and was just doing her job very nice just eating a sandwich yeah chill out man But that night, as she's in bed, she hears a scurrying sound. We zoom in on a cockroach crawling on her counter, and then it seems to glide down the counter, across the floor, and under the dresser, where we see a, like, pulsing Mm -hmm. radiate up the wall. You see the air was, like, flexing? (laughs) (laughs) Fucking Peter, you remember? Yes. Okay, good. (laughs) We hear a deep male voice speak out to her in Welsh. He says, my child, the hour draws near. Soon you will join the great embrace. You've known for some time that this world is just a game. Your life, your childhood, mom, dad. You feel that there was something more and all you yearned for was to touch it. 
I am proud of how far you've come. I'm proud of you. Take on this last test and we will be together truly. Okay, this is horrifying. It's, yeah. There's something about it being in Welsh that obviously is very interesting. Right. Yeah. For reasons. But the fact that it's in Welsh gives it this almost like archaic yeah. feeling. Uh-huh. Like it feels old, which right. just makes it scarier. And it makes you realize like, I know in the Bible, like God would just have conversation with, with folks. Yeah. Right. Like it was just a normal thing that he'd just come down and be like, so here's the deal. You right. know? Well, and Maud said that she's heard his voice before. Yeah. But when you think about that, and this is something that Rose Glass talked about in a ton of interviews, when you think about that now mm-hmm. in the context of, you know, contemporary society, right. if someone said that to you, you would have a lot of pause right yeah i don't mean like a dog or a cat or anything i mean you would turn into a fucking cat (laughs) you'd turn into a werewolf before their very eyes no (laughs) but it was the roach talking to her Uh, yeah right which is also interesting well you know it's odd representation yeah Yeah. well Um, again mysterious (laughs) (laughs) that's just gonna be my go-to but it, it 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 takes you back to that hospital room where you see her entranced by a cockroach right. on the ceiling and yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. since then that was... That's the symbol or right. that's the the form, yeah. I guess. I don't know. She's like, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> but she, she looks down at a Blake painting that looks like someone in flames. Yeah. She asks the voice how she'll know what to do and the voice simply replies that she has always known. Maude looks down at the picture again before climbing back into her bed. And again, I mean, you have somebody that's super devout. Right. Maybe a uh, zealot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This would not appear out of the ordinary to them. No. This is, you know, something that has happened, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this was a voice. I was fucking floating yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Honestly, is... I'll hear a voice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> but in the morning, Maude takes the sheet from her bed and drapes it over herself like a robe. She pulls out the rosary from around her neck and hangs it over the robe before raising her hands in prayer. She smiles up at the shrine and it kind of looks like a child seeking approval. That's mm-hmm. what the face looked like. Like, right? Yeah. Like, I'm doing this right? right? See, and it's so... Okay, here's what's interesting to me is that in another interview, Rose Glass had said that the scene that we just saw was not originally intended to happen. Oh, wow. What she was going to do is kind of just have it play out the night that she had the doubt that she had and then wake up as we see her now. Mm -hmm. But during the editing process, she realized that she needed a scene to give Maude more of a motivation towards whatever happens at the end of the film. And so she put in that scene, they shot it after with the cockroach. I mean, it, it is needed. Yes. Because I'm trying to think of how the transition would go from before to what (laughs) happens. And it, it, it would not make a lot of sense. No. And the fact that, she got the idea while editing and then was able to put it in. Yeah. I think it's a brilliant addition. Yeah, totally agree. And it's one of those, mo- there are several moments in this film that will stick with you. That is one of them. Yes. But Maude fills up a sink and washes her face. She then takes a plastic water bottle and fills it up, making the sign of the cross and presumably blessing it as she mm-hmm. does so. Now, as she's doing this, we see on her shelf huge bottles of hydrogen peroxide and acetone. Yeah. Now, that's going to be a problem. That is. And if that's what's in the sink, you sh- should not be washing your yeah. face. <laughs> no. Um, although, I think it will clean very well. Too well. Yeah. <laughs> it might end up looking a little skeletal. <laughs> <laughs> But someone knocks at her door, interrupting her. And when she doesn't answer, the person calls out the name Katie. Maude looks out the peephole to find Joy and answers the door for her. Maude is still in a tank top and underwear and Joy's like, oh, did I get you out of bed? And Maude's like, no. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Okay. Maude reluctantly lets her in after Joy promises to be quick because she's on her way to work. Joy takes a look around the apartment and is like, oh, this this is nice. Very polite. She's trying. Yeah. As Maude examines the bottle of acetone, Joy tells her that she got her address from work and just wanted to come by and check on her. Maude doesn't reply and Joy goes over to admire her shrine. She apologizes for not going out with her the other night, but she says that she didn't think that she, Joy, would have been much fun. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But she says she tried to call Maude back and Maude didn't answer her. So I really wonder how the other half of that conversation played out in reality yeah. with her maybe not sounding offended maybe yeah uh, maybe Maude. like i don't feel well or i'm yeah. i'm in a bad place uh, or yeah. you know 
and Maude took it on herself. Yeah. Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm glad that we didn't hear the other half, but like me, I would like to know what really happened. Right. Mm-hmm. But Joy offers her a cigarette. And again, Maude says nothing, only going over to her sheet that she hung up by the window. Joy asks how work is going and if Maude currently has a patient. And again, Maude doesn't answer her. I'm going to be honest in this moment right here. I said, Joy seemingly appears to be a decent person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she's definitely dead. Yeah, no, I'm w- concerned for Joy right <laughs> now. I'm, I'm waiting for something horrible to happen. Joy apologizes for how she reacted when she and Maude had run into each other on the street. And she tells Maude that she puts a lot of pressure on herself, but she's sure that Maude is doing a great job because she always did before. She says that she knows what happened before wasn't Maude's fault. And she asks if Maude realizes that as well. Again, decent person. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would have liked to have seen this side of her before. Instead of being like, you? Yeah. <laughs> Do they know what you've done? Like, And then to have this total 180 of being like, well, it wasn't your fault. Well, she probably reflected and was like, she's probably like struggling. Maybe I shouldn't have pointed right. in her yeah. face like that. But she asked Maude to confide in her, still calling her Katie, but Maude stays with her back to Joy, still looking at the window. Just being rude. Yeah. Being like, very, honestly. Being a horrible host, if I'm <laughs> right. honest. Didn't even offer her a glass of acetone. Yeah. No. <laughs> this is the moment when I realized that her eyes were two different colors. Yeah. Yes, me too. <laughs> As she's looking out the window, the sun yeah. hits her, and yeah. I was like, oh, wow. And JP is like five minutes no, in. Her well, eyes it, are... Well, it was, it's hard to tell. I kept having to rewind. It and then is, because I, like, mm. I interpreted it as, is this her being touched yes. from last right. night? That's what I thought. See, I thought it was only happening when something was going on. Okay. I was like, mm. maybe it's just happening when some shit's going down. According to Rose Glass, it's the whole film. And she said that people, she was surprised that people thought that it changed, her eyes changed yeah, halfway I, through. I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, the film's very dark. Yeah, it I mean, is. I, and... I don't know that it's a sign of anything if it's from the start. Right. I just want to say that it's awesome. No, it is. It is. And I'm jealous. <laughs> but in the background, Joy continues to apologize, saying that she and everyone else noticed that Maude was struggling, but no one did anything about yeah, it. Yeah, that I was like, God damn, dude. Yeah. Because now you're acknowledging that y'all knew yeah. Yeah. some shit was going down or something, something was, was wrong, wrong with her. Yeah. And nobody you know, offered to help or to talk or to nothing. You just kind of like, uh, she'll be fine. And she's trying to make it right now. Yeah. But yeah. like at after, you know, sometimes it can just be too right. late. It's almost a cautionary tale. Oh, yeah. But Joy's voice drowns out as Maude stares up at the clouds that seem to be spiraling like that beer. Mm-hmm. Finally, Maude goes over to Joy, takes her face in her hands and kisses her cheek, saying, may the Lord bless and keep you. She thanks her for coming, but tells her that she's nothing to worry about. Back then, she was lost, but now she's been transformed, and soon everyone will see that. Okay, that that's was, all right. That's a threat. Oh, that was yeah. the, <laughs> the shit out of me. I did laugh very hard because she was like, "May the Lord bless you and keep you." And she goes, "You what?" Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, "I'm sorry, what?" <laughs> because it really was. She hadn't been saying yeah. anything, and Joy was still talking. Yeah, yeah. she was. Uh, again, inconsiderate. She thanks Joy for coming and opens the door for her. Joy takes the hint and starts to leave, making sure that Maude is okay before she does so. She tells Maude that she's got to go to work, but she's glad that things are looking up for her. And I think she even tells her that she'll come back later to check on her. Yeah, she did. But she leaves. Now, hold on to your tits, because the rest (laughs) of this fucking movie is a ride. I literally wrote in my notes, here we go, folks. Yeah. That night, wrapped in her sheet, Maude eats in the dark in her apartment. The room is lit by a single candle sitting next to her on a table, along with the water bottle, a large bottle of chemicals, and a pair of scissors. The next thing we see is Maude going off into the night wearing the sheet. She walks her old route past Coney Island and up to the big house on the hill. Coney Island? Well, it was. (laughs) (laughs) She crouches in the bushes and begins to pray. Just a moment later, Esther leaves the house and walks off into the darkness. With her gone, Maude climbs the stairs to the front door. She reaches under the mat for a hidden key and lets herself inside. Maude just walks in the house, the hallway light bulb pulsating with her. She goes straight into Amanda's bedroom where Amanda lies helpless with oxygen tubes in her nose. Maude cradles Amanda's face in her hand and Amanda reaches up to touch hers. I was surprised that she... Kind of reacted warmly right. to Maude just fucking bursting, showing in. up in her house. 
I mean, it's possible that she could think she's dreaming as well. Right. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I did read that their first interaction with each other as actresses mm-hmm. was Rose Glass just had them act out that portion of the scene without any kind of oh, dialogue. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Just to see how their chemistry was as right. people. Uh-huh. And that was enough for her to be like, yeah, this is this is yeah. it. Damn. And they do seem connected in this moment. Right. They do. It's very, very sad. But she pulls Maude close and whispers in her ear. She apologizes for being unkind to her, admitting that Maude just made her think of things that she didn't want to think about, which is so like honest and yeah. like vulnerable because she is dying undeniably. Yeah. And Maude's like, God, hell, heaven. It's like, <laughs> like, calm down. Can you give me a second? Jesus Christ. And can you let me play solitaire yeah. my <laughs> way, please? <laughs> let me cheat at solitaire. <laughs> Maude tells her that it's okay, but when Amanda shakes her head, Maude reminds her that the Lord forgives things that are said in anger because he knows your heart. Amanda questions the Lord, and Maude says, yes, he's the one that sent her to Amanda, and he forgives everything. She only has to ask him to. She unscrews the cap off the water bottle and sticks her finger inside. She uses that finger to cross Amanda's forehead, beginning to pray for her, and Amanda recoils. She asks her to stop the nonsense and suddenly begins to struggle for breath. Maud touches her face and Amanda catches her breath to tell Maud, you must be the loneliest girl I've ever seen. Maud tells her that she's not alone and neither is Amanda. She starts with the holy water again and Amanda pushes her hand away, telling her to snap out of it. Maud just stares as Amanda tells her that she has to know that he isn't real. Maud reminds her that they felt him together, but with tears in her eyes, Amanda confesses that she didn't feel anything. She starts to cry as she tells Maud that dying is dull, and she hates to tell her this, but it's just them there, her and Maud, and nothing she does matters. I was, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the fact that she's like, look, dude, I was fucking bored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I- as I'm watching it, I at this point, you're like, oh, she's just keeping it real. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. All right. (laughs) I will. I do want to point out the fact that everything in this scene is very muted, very quiet. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally leaned all the way forward. Like, oh, like, holy shit. Like, this feels like a weird, like, showdown. I don't know. It's like, it's a lot. But we're tight in on Maude's face as she sobs. And Amanda starts to laugh. We get a shot of Amanda smiling and laughing as she tells Maude, well, that was easy. She launches up as her smiling face elongates and she growls. I pissed my shit. (laughs) This scared the fucking shit out of me. Like, it scared me so bad. When I tell you, dude, I, again, was so mad at myself for watching this at night. (laughs) It scared the fuck out of me. And I have not felt that feeling in years. No. Uh, I have not jumped that hard and felt like a visceral fear. Because it's not only you getting scared because it looks fucking scary. It's right. like, wait, what? Yeah, because it was so unexpected. Yeah. Right, right. I could not have expected anything <laughs> less. John Paul was just sitting there and I was like, fuck! <laughs> I, was, I was scared, scared. I What is it in the scaredy bones? Yeah. The scaredy bone, I yeah. I felt it in my scaredy bones. Straight to the scaredy bone. I do like this whole little... Yes. Yeah sequence that's happening here i swear i it as i said there are moments that'll stick with you this for me is one of the best moments in a film i've seen i 10 years Mm -hmm. i don't know i told y'all that when i was working on it i was like no you know what's gonna happen like calm down (laughs) don't don't get scared you already know the second time i did like (laughs) you know how like a bird clamps down on Uh, (laughs) i i had my talons on the thing I feel like the whole setup is just so good because you're right. leaned in. You're like, oh my God, she just like mods fucking yeah. broken, dude. Mm-hmm. Like you're just, you're so into it. And then, yeah, they pull the rug oh, right yeah. out yeah. from under you. And then with that, the pulsing of the music. Yeah. It's just frightening. But Maude jumps away from her and fucking breaks a glass over Amanda's head. She identifies Amanda as the devil. And with the smile from Amanda, Maude is launched across the room. She crashes into a vanity, breaking the glass. Amanda continues to laugh, and in a deep, distorted voice, she tells Maude to take responsibility for her actions. She says that Maude only came here because she's alone. For a true believer, he is enough, but it's clear now that Maude is as weak as her faith. 
I was God like, damn, damn. bitch. Yeah, the devil's well. got some burns. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is the devil. Yes. <laughs> He's made of burns. Yes. Maud gets to her feet and grabs a pair of scissors from the vanity. She runs across the room, jumps on top of Amanda, and stabs her repeatedly in the chest. Amanda growls at her and we look up at Maude as she brings the scissors down hard and blood sprays across her face. Mm -hmm. She gets off of Amanda and we see her scissors stabbed into her neck, blood sprayed behind her across her bed. Amanda gasps for air one last time before exhaling deeply and dying. Maude slowly walks out of the room with her arms spread wide. Right. She's almost floating yeah. Yeah. as she moves and. This to me, I was like, you know, in her in her mind, she's passed the test. Yeah, this she, was the final test. Yeah, right. yeah. she literally killed the devil. <laughs> this is the <laughs> test. This is the test. <laughs> um, is this <laughs> gonna, is be, this on gonna be on the test? This but is the test. Again, I flash to that poor nurse that's gonna have to find Amanda yep. yeah. tomorrow yeah. morning. I thought the same. And holy shit! But once outside, Maud seems to float away from Amanda's house, her hair blowing back and her laughing soundlessly. Very the witch. Yes. Yeah. She's about to live deliciously. She is. Yeah. <laughs> but back home, Maud washes the blood from her hands and face and gets into bed. The shot of her looking at herself in the mirror, did anybody else flash on Carrie? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of. I mean, hard night, covered in blood. <laughs> yeah. Hard Come night. back home. Washing it off. <laughs> But in the morning, she unfolds another sheet and there are huge, glowing, translucent angel wings on her back. I look, if I were an angel, I'd probably upgrade my wings a little. They're right. a little they were starter little wings. <laughs> <laughs> well, they look like the ones she's seen in the book. They are. Drawn yeah. on the book, yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> I was surprised. Oh, I was yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah. yeah, and she did not seem surprised. No, she's like, I passed my test. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got my wings. But Maude walks down to the beach wearing the sheet and gripping a shopping bag in one hand. We hear thunder, and then we pan up to the sky to see the clouds are swirling around each other with one clear, bright opening in the middle. Mm. Maude stands directly under this opening and sings to herself. Finally, gripping a lighter in one hand, she takes the giant bottle of acetone out of her shopping bag. She raises it and closes her eyes before pouring it all over her head. People on the beach stop walking and take notice of her. And she raises the lighter and we hear people plead for her to not do this. The lighter clicks open and we get a close up on Maude's wet face. She opens her eyes and breathes deeply, her hair plastered to the sides of her head. We see that all the people on the beach are facing her now. And in Welsh, Maud quietly proclaims glory to God, raising her head up to the sky. Now, the fact that she speaks Welsh, mm -hmm. it kind of tips off other things. Yes. Right. She ignites the lighter and goes up in bright, glowing flames, her wings shining brightly behind her. Maud, with her arms raised, emits a bright glow, bringing everyone on the beach to their knees in front of her. She's a she's a saint. Right. Mm -hmm. They all raise their faces and spread their arms as she is. Maud begins to cry as she smiles. She looks up to the sky, looking thankful. But suddenly, for one split second, we see the real Maud charred and screaming as she burns alive. It cuts to black, and we get a giant title again: Saint Maud. Literally talking about it, I have goosebumps. <laughs> no, you're not the only one. <laughs> so what did you guys think of St. Maud? I did enjoy this movie. Like I said, the second time picking everything up and mm -hmm. it's a good movie. It's just not for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, uh, again, it goes back to that. Please don't tell me how shitty things are in reality. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then because... Uh, I don't know. Again, distract me from what's really going are, on. Are you saying it's too bleak? Like it's right. too okay. Yeah. Uh -oh. I was like, I'm just I was like, come on, man. I'm already sad. I don't need to be sad no, for it, this girl. It's I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad for myself. Okay? Yeah. Well, I mean clearly we kinda are have come to the understanding what the ending means. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean the girl was sick. Well mm -hmm. you something was wrong. Barry, she you mentioned that you would have rather it been really happening right because now now i feel kind of like everything i seen i get it we were seeing it from you know what she was seeing yeah but now i just feel bad for her i'm just yeah, like you Dude, should what the fuck it's like i don't this is not so a none hopeful of that was film because oh, no. the best the best scene for me was when lady turned into a demon and she stabbed her up 
So I was like, oh, this is great. But and then it, th- there's no more of that. So and I was there's like, oh, not, there's yeah. no more of that. Yeah, I was like, and oh. In my mind, because for a second, you do think. I right. mean, until y- that ambiguity just gets fucking snatched away from you. Yeah. Like, you don't get the comfort of that ambiguity. Rose Glass had said that she almost didn't include that last shot, but she felt that it would kind of be a, a cop out not to. Right. I, yeah. And I, I, agree. I totally agree. No, it needs to be there. It does. It does. But and that's that's a difference because the first time you watched it, you were like, that was no, stupid. It, well, <laughs> again, I want I would have preferred it to be a uh, like a de- a demon and angel movie. I you know right. been like, oh shit, this is for real. <laughs> you know, because the whole time you're like something's wrong. You know what I mean? Is she really seeing this? Is this really happening? Mm-hmm. But then at the end it's like, oh no, I was all a nope, lie, son. Psych. Yeah, I was like, psych, oh well. <laughs> But, you know, it, that's just my preference. Right. That's what I'm saying. It needs to be there. And you're right. I I did. I paid attention and I see it definitely needs to be there. Yeah. But it is. It's just not. It's not my taste. Right. So it's like, yeah. But it is a good movie. You know what I mean? What it's telling, what's going on. Like, I see listening to the more y'all talk about it. I do understand more and more now why certain stuff happened and mm-hmm. what was going on. Um, but like I said, I, I don't, I don't want to feel bad. I already feel bad. Don't, <laughs> don't make yeah, me feel extra make, bad. Yeah, I was like, come on. I, I keep using this word brilliant. I think this film is brilliant. Yeah. I, it's just so sad that this girl was so incredibly ill. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we can talk because they never really, it's not given a name. Yeah. I am. I'm feeling PTSD. That's kind of what I definitely. thought. I'm feeling a lot of symptoms of schizophrenia. Yep. It, it, she needed help. And this goes back to our conversation with Emily Rose as right. well. And I feel like even Joy being like, like we saw you struggling. Yeah. I yeah. feel like this is something that predates the incident. Yeah. And that just sent her spiraling. Right. Trying to grab onto something to keep her... Maybe to not sit in that trauma yeah, or to think that she's not sitting in that trauma. Or to give her a reason to have experienced that trauma. Right. Oh, all right. To yeah. say, Even better. there's got to be something yeah. more for me. Yeah. If you're putting me through this, never waste okay. your pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. she's using that as almost like a call to action to other people. All right. I do... Glass's intention was that last frame is to show that it is about mental illness yeah. and loneliness. Yeah. But there were other fan theories that were raised that may make you happy, mm-hmm. JP, which was somebody had theorized that the flames that we see are actually Maud's arrival in hell for having killed Amanda. I got goosebumps. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't even- <laughs> Well, then can we just so maybe easy. get like a horn in the back or of like, like a, yeah. a, a there's horns in hell? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the devil is hey. behind her. He's throwing up the peace hey. sign. Clo- He's like, Clo- yeah. We did not get our cloven hoof in the omen. So yeah, maybe see. can we get yeah. it here? I don't even subscribe to that theory. But no. It's, like, <laughs> it's, no, it's a very eerie thought. I personally, I, I agree with Glass, obviously, if right. that's her intention. But it's an interesting theory to think about. Yeah, but I do think this is a film about a very ill person that mm. needed help a long time ago. Yeah, even without the confirmation from her, that is how I interpreted it. Mm-hmm. Because Me too. that, I mean, from Amanda changing, I think until that last frame, really, mm. you could be like, "Oh my god, she was right." Right, like she, and or no, we're just seeing what she saw. I mean, there could be this, and there's enough evidence on both sides. But her doing that, it's like, no, bitch, like none of it was real. Yeah. I think when you realize you're seeing everything from her perspective the whole time. Right. Yeah. There's really not a scene that she's not in. And there's not a scene where like you see Carol and Amanda talking while Maud's out at the store. Right. You never see anything like that. And so it's interesting that we are seeing this warped view of the world through this person Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean everything down to her floating in her apartment can very well be explained away medically yeah i that's what i didn't get the first time that i watched this time Mm -hmm. is that she went over and looked at the fireworks and then probably had a seizure yes right and i I was like and you saw her tense (gasps) yeah that like that fucking (laughs) that blew my mind because i was like man she's 
really like in this shit like, yeah. i thought she was just hallucinating it right but no she was probably really having a fucking medical yeah. moment that she needs help for and she's not getting because it's god mm-hmm. but see and and that but then it goes even with that like you're saying how cool the shots were then it's for me to go back and be like oh that didn't happen then yeah but i mean but, i mean i didn't know but like me like i said me so it's like well that was a fucking lie that didn't well, happen I was like, well, so that was a fucking yeah. lie i was like well i what but, if she did flow what if you know it's like what the fuck man but don't yeah. get mad at the cinematographer for no but i'm doing well, an excellent job yeah no, but, but that's what i'm saying like, how it dare looked, you know that's what i'm saying but it looked cool you it know did. what i mean yeah. but then it's like come on it's like fuck i'm sitting here like oh shit is this really going on or what i and thought it's like I, nope you know, she just had a seizure it's like, and well, then the, fuck. the voice of god yeah no that is no, morphin yeah. clark's voice pitched down right. the, come on yeah. man and the thing is is that you wouldn't know that until the end when she says glory be to god in right. welsh yeah otherwise you're like oh fuck yeah or she's just having auditory hallucinations yeah but the second she speaks in Welsh, you're like, she yeah. knows Fuck. Welsh. She, yeah. 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 Um, when you guys were talking about Amanda with the lighter earlier, I was like, oh my God, is that foreshadowing to the lighter click at the very end? Yeah. The one thing or the couple things that I'm like confused about, do you guys have any theories about her stomach hurting and the, um, the nosebleeds? Uh, the nosebleeds. No, the stomach. I, I, could have swore that like she had cuts on her stomach she does she did. okay so i figured that since this was a re- uh, recent like her becoming or finding religion she was hurting herself for past sins or for yeah you know what i mean because we see her hurt herself throughout the movie mm-hmm. yeah but she says like that she thinks it's an ulcer like it's not it sounded like an I internal don't know. maybe it was infected i don't know and maybe she was eating <laughs> yeah, shit or, I, I mean you yeah. don't know oh, yeah I thought that maybe, I mean, well, when you think blood, blood is so biblical. Yeah. yeah. Body and blood, you, you know, drink some of it, you quench that thirst right. every yeah. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there's also that parallel because after she slaps Amanda in the face, her nose bleeds just yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. So it could be kind of huh. that connection there to be like, they're the same, even if their walks of life are different, they are mm-hmm. connected in some way. I mean, and then again, I could just be reading into it. It could have just been a nosebleed. She did get slapped in the face. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about the fact that pre-incident at the hospital, uh-huh. it seems like Maude slash Katie was a very sexual person. Right. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this was supposed to be read as an unhealthy thing or if this is just... I mean, she just likes sex. I mean, I right. I don't know, but I feel like maybe her godgasm thing is her trying to reroute this. I don't know if it's a compulsion or just something that she likes and right. she feels like she can't do anymore. And then I really feel like there was some repressed sexual feeling for Amanda. Oh, for sure. And I think that's what that whole, I can't have sex with her. So we're going to pray and right. we're going to get there this way. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, that's how I felt the couch thing well but if you watch i mean you see at the scenes where she's going back to the bar yeah she's going back to her old coping mechanisms yeah she's trying what she used to do because it seems like god has failed her right and so it makes sense that she has that connection in her brain like you're saying because it's been proven that's what she used to do yeah and so now she has god and it's maybe a weird commingling in her brain to how they're yeah, this is this takes this place now yeah and it's so upsetting to me that she is so alone and amanda is so alone yeah they could have been very good for they each really other could have right. comfort in each other but and instead this is what had to happen the um another thing is the dichotomy of how like she's a zealot Oh, with yeah. Her religion. yeah. But at the same time, she loses her job with Amanda and the soul she's supposed to save or whatever. And she's like, no, fuck all this shit. I'm going back to the bar. Yeah. yeah. And then Amanda's like, you know, he's not real, right? And Maude fucking crumbles. Yeah. And I feel like that whole end part with Amanda is her brain being like, no, 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 no. She's the devil. Then she's yeah. the devil. Then, you know, this is all real. And, and, you know, I feel like her faith is weak because it's yeah. new and she's 
completely thrown herself into right. it. That was and a so, last ditch effort. Yeah, her she's just overcompensating. No, she's lying to me. AKA, she's the fucking devil. Right. She and that's why she convinced yeah. <laughs> me. That's why I'm crying. She's the devil. She right. couldn't just be a garden variety demon. No. Yes, <laughs> because <laughs> the, the garden variety demon wouldn't make her question her faith no. she's the fucking the actual devil because yeah. my, my faith is strong <laughs> so it's not me it's gotta be satan but i don't know i just feel like this there's so many conversations to be had and for such a short film i feel like we get to know mod so well right. and it's so fucking sad mm -hmm. and it she's she just needed so much help mm -hmm. oh yeah from the beginning and then you throw the trauma of what happened at the hospital and then you throw the trauma of sexual assault and i mean it's just like oh my god give her a fucking break it's mm -hmm. a it's a powder keg that is going right. to go off and i feel like even joy trying to be like look i'm here for you dude like you should yeah. i don't want to put it on her because it's not her fault either but right. it's like god man y'all all saw her struggling that means y'all talked about it and you didn't yeah. do anything I feel like one thing that needs to be said is if you ever feel like you need to reach out to someone, reach out to them. Yes. Yeah. Just period. Yes. it's. I mean, like you said, it is a cautionary tale. Yeah. And it is, like you said, John Paul, incredibly bleak and fucking yeah. sad. But I cannot think of a recent film that brought the emotion that I felt in the last two seconds. Oh, yeah. I I mean, it, I, it rocked my shit. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. I was I was just staring at the credits. Yeah. I'm like, and I'll never forget it. I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we can go into ratings unless you guys want to talk for another half an hour yeah, <laughs> about, <laughs> about the symbolism in the film. Um, obviously, I really loved this. I feel like I don't know that I would call it perfect, mm -hmm. but especially for this being her fir her first fucking film, dude. Right. This yeah. is crazy. I don't really know what else to say. I feel like I just gave a TED talk about it. I don't know. <laughs> but as as hard as it might be to go back and revisit this, I would recommend it because there are breadcrumbs. And I I love when you can look back and be mm. like, oh, my God, she was having a fucking seizure. Mm -hmm. right. Like, I mean, it's just it just wow. Um, But this is kind of hard because <laughs> I came here with a score mm -hmm. and now I'm like talking about it. I've gotten goosebumps multiple times. Um, I will concede that it isn't perfect, mm -hmm. but fucking almost man. Like this made me feel a lot and it, and you can really take it. I don't, I don't want to be like, now let this be a lesson yeah. to you folks, <laughs> but it almost kind of is mm -hmm. like mental health is so important. And I, I think I already got on a soapbox about it in Emily Rose, but please look after yourself. Please look after each other. Like I can't, mm. it's, it's a, uh, this one hit me. You right. know what I mean? But, um, on a scale from one to 10, encouraging Catholic cockroaches. <laughs> I'm going to give St. Maud a 9.5 out of 10. It just, it hits almost every note for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I have been this rocked by a recent film since Hereditary. I'd say that's fair. And um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I, I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> I think I'm done. I keep calling this film brilliant. Mm -hmm. and it's for a reason i think that there is so much here to take from it and so much here to i guess kind of carry with you because i know i said cautionary tale i didn't say that in a flippant way i mean that no yeah like people are going through a lot and you might not realize you know just it, through a daily interaction mm -hmm. but if you ever pick up on something you gotta check in and just to chime in on that the fact that this was postponed and came out in the middle of the fucking yeah. pandemic. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's why it hit me so hard uh -huh. because I know a lot of people felt that loneliness. Yes. And we're struggling. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And sometimes you just got to throw out that. I don't life raft with the fuck right, are those right. lifesaver yeah. like the candy. I do not sure. go into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just it. What did you say? It hits different. It yeah. hits different. <laughs> Gen Zers are like, yeah, yeah, man. But I mean, uh, on the positive side, the performances, Morfid Clark, Jennifer Ely, amazing. Yeah. 
And I mean, everybody else that's in it is really good too. There's not yeah. a lot of, you know, there's not characters. Yeah. There, there was no one that I'm like, okay, dude. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> this guy hamming it up over here. No, it was great. And I do want to say on the character front, each character is a little complicated. Yeah. I mean, Amanda falters on whether or not she's thinking about giving in to what Maud is right. trying to provide. Well, yeah, she asked her for comfort. Yes. Mm-hmm. Maud is going through her own entire journey. Mm-hmm. Right. Even fucking Carol. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like yeah. Carol has her own kind of little character arc. Yeah. Maybe she did realize how much she cares about Amanda. That's mm-hmm. super fair. You know, it's maybe it started as, and I will say because she's a sex worker, sex work is real work. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. When she's talking shit about uh, Amanda to another client, Every job I've ever had, I talk shit. 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, even then, I guess I was a little hard on her because I felt really bad for Amanda. But <laughs> yeah. like, get the fuck yeah, out, get of here, out of here with that shit. <laughs> but, I mean, you're going to talk shit. It's just part of the job. But even then, that character that's in maybe three scenes, she had a change. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's just very, very well written. And there's genuinely scary moments. As much as it's a character study, it's a fucking horror film. Oh, yeah. And they these moments will stick with you. Mm-hmm. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just think um, Rose Glass, whatever you make next, if you're listening, I don't... I, okay. I, I, that'd be really cool. <laughs> hey, girl. Yeah, I, I will watch anything you make, even if it's like a sandwich. <laughs> but... <laughs> On a scale from one to ten, encouraging Catholic cockroaches, I also am giving St. Maud 9.5, hey. encouraging Catholic cockroaches out of ten. I couldn't give it a ten yet. I feel like the more I sit with it, it'll probably grow into a ten over time, but I I flat out unabashedly love this movie. Definitely. Now, nobody get your hopes up because this is not going to be. A, <laughs> there yeah, will be, be no ding, 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 ding. No, no. 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 I'll, I can stop that right now. Yeah, can, um, like Dash I said, those hopes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not happening. Uh, like I said, it's it's not a bad movie. The like I said, the problem with me is that I'm not saying it's not horror, but I was at no time terrified or scared at one at, at all well, in this movie. Oh. I I was <laughs> I enjoyed the lady dying, uh, getting stabbed on the bed by Maud. You don't want to um, rephrase that. I loved Maud <laughs> stabbing the lady on the bed. You just moved some words well, around. You didn't. Well, and I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. Um, but it 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 didn't. It it just. Uh, <laughs> again, it made me just realize how bad still things are. Yeah. In real life. It's right. depressing. And it's it, it it's like I said, it, and I'll say it over and over, it's not a bad movie. Mm-hmm. I, it's not that I dislike it, but it's not my bag. It's not you know what I mean? That's I don't, totally fair. I don't want to watch it and then be like, God damn, I better check on so and so because, you know, mm-hmm. what if whatever or sometimes I feel like shit and then, you know, I just don't want to be reminded of that and it's <laughs> nothing you know, I you're like, I just want to watch yeah. people in sleeping Sca- bags yeah. get hit across <laughs> get yeah, hit against right? the tree. <laughs> I just want to see a man some in your dreams with the yeah. very tasteful <laughs> Kevin hand. Bacon <laughs> love making scene. And it's too long. It's too long. It was too uh, long. No, yeah. But on a scale from one to ten, encouraging Catholic cockroaches, I'm gonna give Saint Maud a seven out of ten. Okay. It's a good movie. And and it is. I just like I said, it's not it's not for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh I had it at a six point five, but talking to you guys and listening and see, you know, it I I'll give it that other half a point to make it a seven. It is a good movie and I would I would even go as far to recommend people if you've never seen it, watch it. Yeah, go watch sure. it because you might get that feeling like you guys get. Right. But I, again, I'm a slasher guy. I yeah. don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> this it's isn't not, your, yeah, your thing. Yeah. It's nothing against the movie or the actors or you know what I mean. It's just it wasn't for me. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. just what it was. And again, I don't want to be sad. <laughs> you know. <laughs> We have a choice in the matter, yeah, right? Well, I came with the nine, and our conversation bumped it up well, for me see, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the thing is, is that not only, I mean, when you look at it on its face, you're like, you know, you've got the this very, very dark 
story. Right. Yes. But you also have, you know, the performances, the cinematography, mm-hmm. the fucking music. And it's all great. Yeah. And it is. everybody brought their A game. Mm-hmm. And then I had a lot of fun talking about a very dark movie, which is not yeah. easy yeah, to do. When, oh, we, yeah. when we all got together this morning, I was like, I'm a little nervous. This movie's <laughs> fucking bleak, man. We're just going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all from us at Podmortem. What would you rate St. Maud and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Podmortem. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at Blood and Smoke, at Real Streeter 84 and at Travis MWH. Please consider pledging to our Patreon and stay tuned until after the music for a special shout out to our Wendigo Getter patrons. And remember, while it is noble to care for others, sometimes self-care is the true blessing. Until next time. Thank you for staying tuned to our shout out to our Wendigo Getter patrons. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Woo. Bless you. Bless yeah. you for staying. <laughs> Peace be with you. And, and also with you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> A special thank you to Chris Ontiveros, Kristen Lofton, Megan Martinez, Kimberly Bass, Melanie Van Huesden, Sophie Hodson, Anthony Jerome M., Jordan Nash, Kent Morton, Allison O'Neill, Guy54, Lala Thomas, Travis and Issa Hunter, Miguel Myers ATX, Mandy, Jennifer Perez, Pierre Lombard, Carissa, TJ Bronson, Gabrielle Trevino, Spooky Mom, Andy Teague, Applin Ontiveros, Karima Rhodes, Antonio Huerta, Kimberly Kleindienst, Will Brown, Linda, Sydney Smith, Osvaldo Soto, Jonathan Booth, Bobby Holmes, Donna Eason, JD Rezac, Molly Gerhart, Armand Spasto, Aaron Aguirre, Eggy, William Barry, Brittany, Charity Oxner, Amanda Six, Mandy Rainwater, and Diego Moreno. Thank you all so much. Yes. And- yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. We both, yeah. both kind of turned into Dracula. Yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to say, you're all saints. <laughs> 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 Nay, you had all day to uh, <laughs> uh, the song. Did Brother Miguel tell you that? <laughs> he, he does, does have, have yeah, a confessional <laughs> booth. I mean, uh, all of you, you're saints. Bless you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>